In this episode, we're going to be talking to our friend Chris Bernardo of The Wand Company about the new working diecast Pip Boy, as well as the other props they're making for the new Fallout series on Amazon Prime. And of course, we're going to also talk to them about everything from Pokeballs to a working tricorder. Better stay tuned. This is your Geek Fix. Today, we've already talked to you before, you know, and, and, and anyone out there that's watching this can can check out the other interview that we did. Actually, it was so, we got so much information because truth be told, I could talk to you for hours and, and you would have the best stories of ever. I, Chris is the most entertaining person to talk to that I've ever met. But about that's that. three, we got three hours of video technically between two two videos that we have posted out there. And, and honestly, I've used so many clips from those videos. It feels like I've been in contact with you this whole time because, uh, because yeah, you pop up in a lot of our videos, including the the Pip Boy, the third video. Did you ever see the third video that we turned out? It was more I like might. a documentary about your company. I also that you've also spoken to my daughter as well, haven't you? About about. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's so true. We feel, we feel like you're part of the family now. I think. That works. She's working at Disney and she's working on the Moana too. So she's. Oh, really- she is. Is, are you allowed to say that? Cause she'll never tell me stuff. She's always like, I can't uh, well, tell you yet. And then she'll tell me down the road. She'll be like, yeah, I did, did this. <laughs> she's, very, she's very, very good, actually. She's, she's, uh, she is very good like that. But no, she's, it's been announced. Oh, that's very cool. I have, and I have a whole bunch of things here that that I have. I, I was thinking to myself, how many one company things do I have? I, I mean, besides, all of you out there might know Chris from the Pip-Boy as well as I've got my Fusion Flea over here. Um, we got my, my uh, here's my Sonic screwdriver, which I, which I didn't put batteries in, uh, but at the same time. And then uh, this is one of my favorites, actually. This this right here is the uh, communicator, the Star Trek communicator, which comes in this beautiful case. And uh, is the, one of the best things about it, about this is that um, not only... Does it look and sound like the actual thing, if you could hear that? But also, it it's uh, connected to my phone. So I can actually do, I can actually do this. Here we go. Beam me up. Okay, energize. There you go. Uh, it, it, it's so cool looking. Everything about this is so cool. And of course, on all your products... You always have the stuff that you have to put on the back, like you know these little, these little what what do you call those? Well, the safety, the regulatory text. Is that what it is? Regulatory text. Uh, you snuck in the enterprise numbers into it on the back of this. Um, you know, uh, um, on here too. I think also with the Sonic, you snuck some things in, and and on the Bluetooth speaker, which I also have for the for the Pip Boy, uh, you you put it on the bottom. Where you put in the screwdrivers and things. I mean, like, yeah, the, the the things that you guys do are not only the most accurate props at, at a really reasonable price, but also tend to have these really fun in-world things to them. This, by the way, I didn't mention. I can, I can, I could turn on and off my TV. Um, we when we automated our home. I have this little thing over here for for doing IR signals uh, for for different things. So I was actually able to open and close my garage with it, uh, things like that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it, very cool, I very cool show, things. I should I should show you our latest thing quickly though, uh, the Pokeball. I'll have to I'll have to nip and get it. You just wait one second. Yeah. So for the new one, but also I could this. I could give you a sneak preview of the um, now now. Is the this beast. the same as the other ones that you have? Uh, the mini Pokeballs, right? Oh. Yeah. This, okay. this, this is a very... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, here it comes. So it, the, the Pokeball, the, the large-scale Pokeball, um, is the size of the original Pokeball. But on their belts, right. the trainers have this small... belt. The ball's carried small. Oh, so yeah. Right yeah. The one. Now, in the, the um, original designs for them, the Japanese designs... The big ones were the size of a baseball, and the right. little ones the size of a table tennis ball. So we decided it would be very cool to um, replicate the small ones. I think this is up to date, and obviously we're going to be doing the, the uh, Pit Boy, hopefully we'll be talking about that in a minute. But this yeah, up to date yeah. 
one of the nicest things we've made. We've we've redone the packaging so it's pulp and paper, which is nice. Wow. Uh, the product itself is just is just gorgeous. Oh wow! Oh yeah, it is heavy. Yeah. It's made in metal. Would these be the ones that are typically like yeah. on your actual belt? Yeah. yeah, like not using them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. This one has all the functions of the large one. It is um, made in metal. If I turn it on, mm -hmm. it's uh, proximity it's sensor. Light. It's light. Nice. So as your hand gets closer, that proximity sensor sorry, that you just said, so as your hand gets closer, it, the light appears, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is so cool. You know, as you touch it, very the, cool. And the stand senses when the ball is going to go. And I see in this video, you can um. see it in real life, it's not. And then the stand is um, it's really, really lovely. So, I mean, this wow. is just a product. It's very, very nice, very beautifully made. It's very heavy. It's like a glass marble. It's wow. very, very nice. The other, thing, the other thing it comes with is a small token. Uh, it's silver-plated coin, basically. This one's got uh, oh, wow. Orbazor, um silhouettes on it. And then this will allow you yeah. to... Uh, oh, that. cool. You can then rest the ball on the tabletop or whatever. But that's that, that product. That is so good. Cool. Little scoop, though. Um, wow. This this product, no one has seen yet. This is oh, wow. Short. This is the Beast Ball oh, wow. out later in the year. Beast Ball. And it is a really gorgeous, gorgeous product. Um, this one has been just... <laughs> is that what it is? Is the Beast Ball? Yeah. It's totally different to the others in... Uh, um, this is just the prototype, so the software is not working properly yet. Uh -huh. Just quickly, um, it will have proximity sensing, mm -hmm. where the button will light up with a different proximity, and then it also oh, whole ball glow. Wow, that's oh, so wow, cool. That's cool. That's yeah. nice. So this is going to be awesome. This product. that is awesome. Shouldn't really show you. Yeah. that's a secret thing. Oh, okay. oh, nice. Of course, you can show it. You can Sorry. put that. We shouldn't uh, okay. show it. You can show it. You know what I mean. So let's. Are we? We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're gathered together to talk about all things Fallout, and uh, we are. So should really be talking well, about and that. Can I tell you too beforehand? So I uh, within about twenty four hours ago, I released a video just discussing this. I also did a little effect. I thought everyone would pick up on the fact that it's just a picture, an animated <laughs> picture. But I've had a lot of people writing me saying, "How'd you get that already?" Uh, but at the same time. It, it has it has yeah it has fifteen thousand views and 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 I wanted to do a shout out because I don't know if you read any comments but several of the comments uh, when they're talking about the one company are actually about Charlotte saying how how awesome Charlotte was with them at some point in the past like and that they remember this and they remember her name they remember you know the whole interaction and how great she was Charlotte if you if you contact uh, the one company for something you most likely right that's who would be writing you back things they all remember her by name and stuff so shout out to Charlotte because she's pretty awesome so so yeah she, that's that's one of the things that she, was in there <laughs> well, that's really really sweet and um uh, yeah. very cool she when she first started working for us um i sort of i said to her you know our fans are real star trek fans so it'd be great if you wore the star trek stuff so and I thought she might say, "Do you know what? No, no, it's all right." And then she said, "Yeah, of course." So that's that's her identity, is it? And she was also the model used for our wands in the early days. If you if you look, oh, web, she was. She is. Oh, she is Charlotte and the wand. That is the same Charlotte. So, if you look on our website, oh, you wow. see pictures of the the wand. What I did was, and this right. is the thing, I wanted to take photographs of the wand. When you think of a wand, it's like really basically a stick. But it was really hard to work right. out could take photographs of a stick so yeah. i looked i looked online and in magazines at fashion photography uh specifically right. jean paul gautier and um, some fragrance uh photographs hand lipstick, modeling that sort of thing <laughs> and then when when people are looking at close up and then i basically just copied those poses when i got charlotte to hold the product in a way and then zoomed in and she was a bit younger oh, than wow. she was 16 or 17 then so wow when you see it yeah. So, uh, one very yeah. funny thing I must tell you that we did this little trick where I said to her well can you balance the wand on your fingertips and then can you I'll, I'll hang a string on one piece of, like a, a thread 
and you can move one finger away and it'll look like it's magic. Anyway, uh, we did it. It looked quite fun. I was saying, just concentrate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was obviously held by two bits of thread. And it was, right. it was touching the end of her fingers by, on blue tack. Anyway, she did it. The video looks quite cool. And I will link you to that later. Um, but the funny thing is that our PR agency rang us up and said, how did you do that, that trick? I said, I said, blue tack. <laughs> And he said, I spent all weekend trying to do it at Blue Tack. And I couldn't <laughs> a stick balancing what was both advertising. <laughs> no, way. no way you could balance it like that. It was so funny. So I tried loads of times. I couldn't make it work. So, yeah. That's so I, I think the philosophy is with the products. And you were saying about having the detail on it. And also having um, caring for our customers. When somebody entrusts you with their money, the thing you have to do back is you have to give them value. You have to care about them. And that, that starts, that value starts right when you're designing the product. So I, I often think, what are the lovely things I'd like to discover in the products? And how would I like it to be if it, is, if it was mine? It's my thing. So I care about it. That's why it has. What's surprising to me is that other products don't have this sort of thing because it's not expensive to do that part of it. The expensive part is making the tooling and, and spending two years developing it. But actually what you write inside it or how you dress it up is, I find it's it's sad that that's not done more often, but it's great because we love doing it. Um, but yeah, and value, giving value to the customer. So I think when you say, you said earlier about good value, I have got a few things. We Hopefully we can talk about it today. Well, let's do it now. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I feel that... Um, because when we come to talk about the pit boy, we've set the price at, at what we think is, is a reasonable price. We try to mm-hmm. give actually less margin to everybody in the value chain because we prefer to give all the value to the customer. So as much as we can. Obviously, everyone in the value chain has to stay in business. Otherwise, there'd be no products. But what I would like to do is re, recalibrate people's idea of what is an expensive replica and what is a cheap replica. Because... When we come to talk about the Vertibird, if we are talking about that so as a thing, a story I have about that, um, it's going to be four or four hundred and fifty dollars, which is expensive for a prop replica. And there is the jury is out of whether we'll sell a few hundred or a few thousand or a few tens of thousands. My feeling is that people regularly spend that kind of money on other things, and they spend that kind of money on other things which perhaps aren't even good value. And so I would say if you're going to buy something you're going to keep for years, something that's been made incredibly well, you know, in this case in metal with all details and things like that, then really it's worth spending money on getting something really nice. You never regret it later because um, you have something that you can keep and something that's really valuable. So, but it, the trouble is that people compare with other things like statues and figures and things. And so they, yet they would easily spend that money with a whole family going out for a meal or going somewhere maybe they wouldn't they you know that money's gone and they'll never see anything for it again so i'm i i think anyway that's that's the deal so we've got that we've got the lucy's bag as well um they're lovely things so uh yeah well, i didn't know got... any of these things you're gonna be <laughs> oh, well, putting they're out dropping it like it's hot you're just yeah. throwing it out right left <laughs> that, that, well, that, that, let me make one comment too real quick is that uh, you know and for those that watch that third pip boy video which you know I mean, right now, by the way, the the number the videos that we have that involve one company products because I went through and added it up last night. Uh, you know, we we have over a million views. Wow, uh, almost almost to two million right now, just related to your product. Um, what? And so, you know, I mean, people. So you have this audience that's out there, but one of the things I want to show in that third video is really it's a story about the fact that the one company one. They want to turn out something that that is that is quality and that is you know that is for the fan. But also, when you can't, I mean, the times where you haven't turned out something, even though you were planning on it originally, it's because you couldn't do something that would be that you felt would be right for the customer. Correct. And and uh, so and and you know that's where then you make the sacrifice. In fact, you you've made me know about some things that that you were working on that you've never released. Maybe you can talk about this later on, but at the same time, you know, I, I know that, that unless you're unless you're able to turn out what you know would be a good thing for the customer, you don't do it, and that's that's uh, that's very important, I think, uh, to me, uh, is is that ethic that you guys have. So, yeah, but it makes sense. I think the thing the thing with products is that if you, 
um, if your main thing that you care about is is the customer, the end user, if you care about that, everything else, everything else falls into place because you know you stay in business, you have lovely products, people like them. Yeah, there are there are things we could do better always. I think with the mini Pokeball that I've just shown you, it's one of the best things we've ever done. It's so perfectly formed and so there isn't really any way it could have been put together better. Um, little, thi- uh, d- little things that are really neat is here you see this, for example. You have to take that apart to get the battery out. But you can't see how to get that apart. In fact, you won't, I don't know if I can show it to you, but there's a tiny hole in the back. You may be able to just see it in the light there. There's a tiny hole in the back. And if you poke a SIM card, SIM release pin in there, the top lifts up and then you can pull the, the batteries oh, out. Oh, wow. The very, very, very neat, cool. Seamless, yeah. Very neat little thing. So I think yeah. when, you're, when you're, I love developing products. Um, the, the, the biggest challenge we have is actually reaching customers because I know if we reach the customers, they'll love the stuff because it's made for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, I think also the, the licensing departments are pretty far away from the actual customers most of the time um, when it comes to getting product uh, out there. Because I think most of the stuff that I've bought from the one company is directly from Bethesda and not in retail or anywhere else uh, that Bethesda could have pushed the, the stuff to. Now, I'm from Europe, so uh, it's slim pickings already with, with the Fallout stuff and, uh, and Bethesda stuff. But... Uh, um, so there is a market for it, but but it's difficult to get because of but course you know what, you're you know what, with licenses. But, yeah, but Vince, the problem is for us, it isn't um, it isn't making products that can go to those markets. It's accessing the markets via the stores, because when we yeah. go to when we sell in the US, let's say for example we're doing the gear store or a Pokemon, in fact. So for Pokemon, they might buy ten times more in the US than their Pokemon Center in the UK. So in okay, yeah. Europe versus America, we try to get the product in. We have we have pitched our products to French stores. We go round. We, we did originally at one point have a uh, a Dutch store um, buying our stuff, okay. but you know we have tried in the past to uh, sell our products in Europe. It is a real uphill struggle. Um, for example, loads of fans write to us from Canada saying, "Why don't you sell it in Canada?" They say, well, tell us the stores to go and approach, and we will. You approach them, they ghost you, you don't get anyone coming back to you. We can't set up our own store in Canada, and we can't set up our own store in Holland, although I'd love to. Um, I have to say, if you want any stuff from us that's, that's um, on Amazon FBA, for example, in the UK, on, on our Amazon thing, there are, um, there are uh, third-party services which will ship from the UK store to anywhere in the world. And we have oh, put yeah. the, for the um, pip, uh, Pokemon, Pokeballs, it's the Master Ball was only released in the US as a, as a limited edition and in the UK, okay. special edition. And a lot of fans in Europe wanted the Master Ball and even in America. And the way to do it is to go to one of these third party stores. They buy it from uh, Pokemon Center in the UK and then they ship it to you. Okay, yeah. So there, there yeah. are ways of getting around it. That's but in a good this deal. Global, in this global world, I find it really annoying that we can't, and of course, in the UK, we have Brexit, which is just ridiculous. So <laughs> yes. um, as a result of that, we've had to set up a separate VAT entity in Holland, a separate one in Germany. Okay. Um, yep. It's a nightmare, a epic portions. Yeah. So you have, you, as, a, as a manufacturer, you fight that, the, the, the red tape. Um, for example, yeah. the Lucy bag we're making. We're making a Lucy bag. Uh, in the in the show, you'll see she wears a bag with a with a, a fleece sort of blanket in it. We're making an ed- yeah. exact replica of the real one from the patterns wow. that we made from. Nice. Okay. The thing is that it's being made in China, and to import it to the US, there's forty two point six percent import duty. That is so such wow. a shame. It's going to be expensive. Forty two point six percent. Uh, in the UK, it's like four percent or something import duty, or a few percent. Yes. The trouble is, you have to you have to battle that the import duties, and then of course you have to go and get the product has to be ratified to be sold in each country, which in some cases oh. could be thirty or forty thousand dollars worth of testing and stuff to make sure it's going in the territory. And finally, you have to get a license for it. Now we wanted to yes. sell our Pokeballs in Japan. We want to sell them in Asia. We want to sell them around the world, but we have struggled to get like even with a successful product that sold. A quarter of a million units. We are still struggling mm-hmm. licenses to sell it in other countries. So it's Oof. it's a tricky one. 
And fans, yeah. even, no, I don't think fans know that as a retail, as a manufacturer, we would love to sell our products to as many people as possible. Obviously, we're not True. We're, we're not singling out certain countries but we don't want to work with them. We, we would love to work everywhere. Um, if I could just uh, interject and, and give my opinion on, on why I haven't got a one company Pokeball yet. <laughs> it's because I'm, I'm, I'm such a nerd that I actually wanted to open and I can understand due to the practical effects and the nature of it. Uh, the, with the lighting and everything and the motion sensing that, that you want to keep it closed. But I would I personally would like a one that opens with the mirrors in it like you see in the anime, like if you would open it up with the latest. Right. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just have to re- arrest you there. We designed yeah. it. <laughs> we designed it so that you could open it. And we designed the oh. electronics, the whole thing, to be inside. You, you couldn't see it. So the, the, so the shell? Oh, wow. Yeah, the sphere, the sphere inside wasn't quite a sphere. It looked like one. So we hid the electronics on flexes inside. So when you opened it, it was empty. And yet, when you went near yeah. it, it, we designed all that. And Pokemon said, oh. you cannot make an opening. No one's meant to know what's inside it. Your license is for video oh. games only. And as a result of oh. that, you, oh, wow. you yeah. can't oh. make So there That's you go. the interesting, though. Yeah. They, you awesome. must be answering a question play a lot of people have. <laughs> yeah, most likely, yeah. Just, I just say that uh, there, there is a slight upside to that, is that the opening thing would have been very, very tricky to manufacture. So yeah. Yeah. I think, not that we breathe a sigh of relief, but um, yeah. the pokeball has been a very successful thing anyway for us. But, I mean, it yeah. could yeah. have easily been. I've like, seen them in stores here, yeah. Yeah. Well, plus you'd have to breed them, and you know you grow them, and then people have to throw stuff at them. It's just <laughs> oh, and I think, you know what we've done. So you got Peter come after you. <laughs> given that we've weighed the big one, and it's this is uh, half the diameter, which if you can work that out, is ten ten times less volume. It's a tenth of the volume. Wow. So to get all the pa- everything in there and get yeah. it to work. Um, is a challenge, and especially with all the... What I wanted something, when we were designing it, I said I want something yeah. that's brought to the level of quality of a watch, so that all the parts are really beautifully made there. Yeah, there. yeah. Um, great. The thing with it is, it's very difficult to take a photograph of it, because if you have this one next to the big one, and you have them at different sizes, you can't tell the difference between them. So you need scale, which is why you need to show it okay. someone holding it in their hand. So they're right. orthogonal, uh, basically. Are, are you guys going to make a belt too, then? Is that... <laughs> I, can I just say this, right? I, I shouldn't really be saying all this, but... Uh, um, oh, oh, okay. Basically, um, we don't have the anime license, so we're not allowed to say oh. that. We're not allowed to say that this is what the trainers use. So can I just say that oh. allegedly what the trainers use? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm only paraphrasing the press release that went out, I think, by mistake that had that written in it because our, our license does not allow us to, to market them as products where they are the replica of the trainers, which I think is going to really hamper right. the And we are currently applying oh, yeah. to extend the license. But there you go. So which game is it tied to since you said it's the game license? Um, <laughs> it's a VG. It was what they call a video games license. It covers all the games, but the right. thing, okay. you never see it on the belt in the games. You only see it on oh, the belt right. in the anime. Right. Oh, okay. uh, well, yeah. if, 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 if I may, there is a slight way around this. In the video games, the trainers do say that they are typically worn on their belts, so maybe you can get around it that way. When, right. do, they, when, do, they, when do they say that, James? <laughs> well, I know that in in um, sorry, in one of the games, one of the um, uh, swimming trainers uh, makes a sort of joke to sort of say. Oh, I've got my Pokeballs. Guess where I'm hiding them? Uh, so they, do, they, they, do sort of, they do sort of reference where oh, the yeah. Pokeballs are, so I'm sure there must be a comment somewhere that they're using it on their belt. Oh. I, I don't fully know, though. I, I know that there are comments referencing where go. they have their, their I have uh, Pokeballs. I have to say, that, that does remind me of a joke um, where the, a tennis player's got a, a, a slightly bulging pocket, and someone says, what's that? Mm. And they say, it's a tennis ball. He says... Geez, that must be really painful. I tell his elbow once, and that hurt enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, one, one thing I'll, I'll say too, and we'll, we'll, we could probably come back to this part later, but we'll play into what you're going to be talking about also with the Fallout stuff. Is um, also you you sought a lot of uh, community input in relation to some of these things. You know, kind of like like you're just doing with James. Uh, 
you know, like like one of the things you're putting out or that you've had working on, which is a tri- was the tricorder, uh, things like that. Is is you have forums and things like that that you're reaching out and having having people give you feedback, and that's also something I think is pretty commendable about about the Mond Company is getting some I input. Do, I, and... Yeah, I do like it when we when we when we solicit feedback for things or. Um... When we give away stuff, you know, someone writes to us and says, I've got something, it's, it's got a, I've had it for six years, it's broken or a scratch or something, and we, I'm missing art, can you help me? If we have the spare parts and we can do it, our policy has always been to help out and send them. And sometimes when that happens, the, the story gets around, hey, if you just write to the one company and say, I've got it broken, can you send me a new one? We might do that. And there's been a fear at different times, especially when I talked to Charlotte about it, we, we discussed what if everyone starts asking for stuff for nothing and you, you've got to be able to say no. And I said, well, the deal is you can always say no. So I think when you solicit advice from people, you have to be a picture of what you want to do. But at the end of the day, it's my product. So I will do what needs to be done to make it. And I think when fans write to us and they're sometimes angry, I know with the tricorder we're making, people would like, a handful of people would like to see a video camera in it. Apart from the fact that that's very difficult to do, we don't have in dollar budgets like mobile phones and when people uh, I'll, when people say the word just they say could you just put a video camera in it we banned the word just our company well they have no idea yeah, yeah. no it's 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 big big deal and and if you yeah if you had a, a development team of 100 and and maybe 500 grand to develop that then fine but we don't so and on top of that there was no video camera in the original one it may have randomly taken video by some magical thing but there was certainly no video camera in it so what i what i say to fans who ask us things why didn't you do this why didn't you do that why didn't you put a medical scanner in the tricorder for example i will say um we would always have considered things really carefully so we don't do stuff genuinely i mean sometimes you make a mistake but we don't just randomly do things we don't try and make things cheap for the sake of it so but I think most fans understand that we have considered really carefully what we're doing before we do it. And once they get on the same page as us, they kind of think they kind of accept that. So, yeah. The great thing about fans is that they're usually passionate, and the worst thing about fans is that they're usually passionate. Yeah, I like I like I, like the I do get that. But if you've got a passionate yeah. fan, I mean, there's nothing worse than uh, basically people just not caring one way or the other. You know. That, that to me, is the worst thing. So if someone's angry or they're very ecstatic, I don't mind so much because I can work with that. But indifference is something that I really, really struggle. Now, on, on the comments, again, uh, in relation to the Pip-Boy, uh, so there's, there's 500, 500 comments so far? Of wow. the 500 comments, you got three groups. You got the people that, that, that wouldn't probably touch it anyways. But then you got the people that said immediately, I purchased it. You got the next group that says, "I'm trying to figure out how to purchase this." Yes. So I mean, like, yeah, it's that's that's good. Well, well, that's, yeah, I mean, the, one, <laughs> the ones that won't the, the ones that won't get it anyway fall into two big groups or three big groups. The first are people that mm-hmm. never heard of it, don't know it, don't like it, don't want it. That's fine. Right. They're the ones that secretly would would want it, but 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 can't afford it, or you know, uh, they they can't sort of make their mind up about it. The the ones that go on a lot of those uh, socials and and do random negative comments about uh, things that they don't know anything about i think that's a bit of a game and i have to just put that to one side the the, the haters were the people that just say this is rubbish it's going Trolls. to be and i just think well yeah do they know um do they know what it's going to be like and, it, and those people aren't our customers anyway so i it doesn't really and, and they almost form a sort of self-referencing cohort of people that trying to outdo each other with the the bitchiness of their comments which is quite funny sometimes but i I, you know i just have you have to ignore that the trouble with humans is and i i I count myself as one of them is that uh we 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 evolved from hunter gatherers and if we tasted a bad berry and it made us ill despite the fact we had a thousand berries before that that were fine we probably wouldn't we would try that one again so ne- negative comments have a disproportionately big effect on you. So a hundred people can say they love something and one person, he just puts the electric thing right on the nerve of your tooth and tells you something that gets to you. And then you constantly think about it. Um, I read a book about surgeons and he said, 
that every surgeon has a private graveyard that they go to when they're feeling down of the people that they've killed. And I think when, you, when you're a developer, you have your own private graveyard that you go to of the comments that people have made about your product, to, to, that it was rubbish or that they didn't like it or it wasn't right for them or it, it broke. So I think you always aware of those comments and you try harder next time to do to make sure it's the best it can be. That's all you can do. Well, you, you have already been hinting at some different things with this. Do you, do you, now you're, and you're traveling, by the way, again, for those that don't know, you're, you're traveling around right now. Uh, currently, you know, you were just recently in Texas, right? Yeah. And you yes. went to the, you went to the big event, um, which I, I'm thinking most people are aware of because I, there's plenty of people out there that wish they were invited. Uh, that's all I've seen. It's like, <laughs> right? But this was a, a special, a special Jer- event for Amazon. Yeah, I, I read a lot. Yeah, can I, I, just, I wasn't I, actually there, but. <laughs> let's just say, yeah. I, this is the story. I wasn't invited. I went there. Oh, to, you're right. You just no, bust in. <laughs> that is, when you hear this, you'll, you'll, uh, yeah, better put that water down. Um, so, oh, yeah. well, that was um, about, about eight months ago, uh, Amazon came to us and said, uh, or contact us and said, would you like to come and listen to and do a read through of the scripts for a new show we're doing Fallout? It's top secret. Um, and we'd like you to do the, actually at the time, we'd like you to think of the pit boy for it. There's a pit boy in it. We'd like you to do that. So we flew out to LA, the studios there. Uh, that's an awesome experience, by the way, the old uh, Amazon MGM, the sort of uh, studios there. Uh, got a few pictures around there. Anyway, we went to the studio we, we, we had to leave our phones behind. We, did, we read three scripts. We had to sign in. We could read one. Then it was put back into a box. We given the next one to read and decide at that point. We took some products with us to show. They loved them. I read the scripts. I felt strongly that there were two other products that would be very cool to do. The Vertibird was one of them. I, we haven't done it before. Really done. Um, we've done scale vehicles before, so I thought we could do something in die cast to be really cool. Um, no fans want that sort of thing. Um, obviously, we're going to go large on it, so it's going to be expensive. But you know, whatever, we'll do something good there. Yeah. And okay. Lucy wears a bag. The 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 main character wears a bag, uh, backpack. And I thought it would be good to get into some soft lines to see if we could do that. So uh, those were the two things I pitched. They broadly said almost yes straight away without even thinking about it. Just give us a proposal, and we'll give you a license for those. So I came back on cloud nine and then set to work on yeah. it. That, obviously, I said at the time, if it airs in April, there's almost no chance we can have things ready in time because it takes 18 months to do a product properly from scratch. We might get a bit quicker with the soft lines, but you know, it, might, might, it depends how difficult it is to make the material, the fabrics, and all that sort of thing. Yeah, you have to be so, careful not to call the canvas yeah. bag. Yes. Oh, yeah. Obviously, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there's a yeah. story about that. I was, I was actually present... Yeah when that whole thing blew up and i was actually there oh, really? so I, I was at oh, the well. enter of the of the of the approval process for that other bag so if you don't want to go there is no, that, is, is that your graveyard to... <laughs> yeah the bag would be a proper bag in fact it is it's gorgeous i can, I can show you photographs you can you can put a photograph up yeah there. it's yeah. a lovely looking product um so anyway we we go back we start pitching we said right it's going to take some time to do it and then um, as we move on, we're getting we're, the CAD's coming. It's it's they're in crunch. The studio's in crunch, so we're not getting the CAD as quickly as we'd like. And then come December, we're still in some pretty preliminary CAD CAD for the Bertie Bird, the Pit Boy. We have actually got the original CAD that they used to build the Pit Boy for the show, and they made a load of them for the uh-huh. show. A lot of guys are wearing them, and girls are wearing them. So we have the actual the the three D printing CAD. Now, to be fair, the three D printing CAD is not machine is not machine ready to be manufactured cad uh we have right. to get, a lot we have to do to make it ready to be made and manufactured and have an lcd display in it and all the various things the one in the show has um a basic a space behind it and i think it has some it's like a phone or something there that's how they programmed that up but our one has to have a real display in it that's 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 the criteria yeah. to start with um we went back and pitched the idea there were three versions possible no display at all, just a light up screen like our current Pip Boy, the one we did for right. 76. Um, yeah. and then it's a screen which has some animations on it from the show, hopefully all of them. Or but it has Blackberry anim- Passport. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, yes. And then, um, 
the one that's actually Bluetooth connected and you can do it. Well, my business partners, you know, Richard, oh, yeah. very quickly we ruled yeah. that last one. Bluetooth, we, we had all the fun and games with creating the watch for Starfield. We did not want to uh, open that uh, rat's list of issues again. It's, it's a complicated... No, I, I yeah, don't bring it out yet there, Ben. Who yeah. <laughs> 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 Excellent. <laughs> yeah, so um, that, that was, a, that was a, a, almost a company-killing project. So that, that one, oh, wow. we thought, we, <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult to do. Um, and we have more stuff we want to do with it as well. We're still negotiating with Bethesda about oh, how to okay. do that. So Excellent. moving on, we thought the best thing to do would be to make a replica that was really accurate Beautifully made, distressed, had had some metal components in it, and yeah. uh, had a working LCD screen, some sounds, all from the show. And to be fair, wow. I think that gets us 95, 98% of the way towards what a fan will want. And we can add yeah. some functionality. In fact, we decide. Yeah. yeah. And I think the yeah. Bluetooth thing, people will write to us and say, hey, like they do with the, the, the tricorder, can I record? some shows onto it and watch them or can I do this? Or, I mean, you don't need, that's the last 1% and it's, it gives you the 90% of effort to do that. So we didn't need to do that. So um, then in about December time, uh, the Amazon said to us, we've got this event South by Southwest. What can we have there? Um, we were coming up to Chinese New Year. I think it was even January. Uh, and I said to the factory, I want... The, the samples that I showed them in January, on January the 9th it was, I went to Amazon to show them the, the first stage of handmade models, which were in resin. They were made in plastic. They are just 3D printed, and they weren't working. And I had a working screen, but it was in another box and all this sort of thing. The VertiBird was just a plastic model to show them the scale. It's 143, so it's, it's a good foot, more than a foot long, 14 inches long. It's big. It's lovely, right? Wow. And they said, could we have these for South by Southwest to put in a cabinet. Um, now, I came back from that in the, and said to the factory, I want one with a screen that works inside it because it's going in a cabinet. I want fans to see it. I want it to be animated. I want the vertebra with lights inside that lights up. I want it to be made in metal because the current one's plastic. So they paid guys to work over Chinese New Year. Now, that's never happened. Oh. oh. All right? And then, right. Then, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it took... It took, it was so tight that the guy, I, I, one of our guys, one who works for us, works, he's a, we have a uh, Hong Kong employee, he's a lovely guy, Thomas Wong. He's a very good engineer and someone I've worked with for years. And when he, he came out to move his job, I said, you've got to come and work for us. So he works for us. In the pandemic, he lived for 11 months near the factory for the watch so that he could make sure it was being done okay because he was on, he, and away from his family, he lives in Hong Kong, he lived in China. For 11 months was I mean, he's an amazing guy anyway he flew over last sunday from china to hand carry them to me and he was going to come in the morning and i said why have you booked the afternoon flight and he said oh because the factory wanted another half a day <laughs> that's how tight it was and then on monday i flew out to uh austin to hand carry them to put in the display cabinet of the thing uh that we're doing for south by southwest so so far wow. so cool. Um, I arrive, I chat to the guy, we go down South by Southwest activation site, which is basically incredible sort of place. Looks, I mean, it looks like a film set and it hasn't been put together in a sort of shaky way. It's all welded steel. It's incredible. I don't know what they're going to do with it afterwards. I mean, I did ask them. They said, well, it all started as junk. And when we're finished, a dumpster's going to come and it's all going to go back as junk. So frankly, it's really going back to its original state. But um, <laughs> well. anyway, I went there, saw it in the, saw it in the case. Um, I said to the guy, you know, when, when you're finished doing this, you know, he said, you can't come tonight. So it's just VIPs and it's um, an influencers and stuff. It's a special event. I'm sorry you can't come to it. So I said, looks fine. I'll be at the hotel if you, you know, if you, if you can let me down in the afternoon just to look at the finished scene, then it would be lovely. So I went out for five minutes in the afternoon, had a look, went back up. I was doing some work. I've been doing all the retouching of the photographs and things for the, for the website <laughs> and for going live. And there's a last minute panic everywhere. And then I went down to have my supper. It's about seven or eight o'clock in the evening. I'm, of course, I'm jet lagged and everything. And I'm just finishing having my dinner. And I get this text saying, it's gone a bit crazy. We've got Elon Musk down here and we want to give him the birthday <laughs> card. Would it be OK if we do that? So I said, yeah, fine. He said, you have the one I gave you in the room. This is the first model that we ever made, a plastic one. So I said, yeah, I have that. 
he said, uh, I said, I can bring it down. It would be lovely to meet him. Ha ha ha. And he went, yeah, well, stand by. So I said, I am standing by. And I quickly paid for my bill. <laughs> I ran up to the hotel room and I got this message, right? Yeah, bring it down, please. So then started the most bonk, insane hour where I went down to the activation site with this model, got it out um, in the transit from me to Amazon, Amazon to me and the hotel, one of the blades had broken off. So I said, well, he said, can you repair it? So I said, do you have any super glue? I can run back to the thing. So they said, we've got loads of, so the glue has got in the, in the dark with mobile phones on it. We repaired uh-huh. it. And then they said, right, Elon's over there. Should we just go and give it to Elon Musk? So I said, yeah, all right then. I'll come over. So we, <laughs> he came over. No biggie. No, we go. Going... <laughs> So bonkers, shake his hand. Da, da, da. Then they kind of chickened out giving it to him. And I think, you know, oh, no. they thought it'd be a good idea. Then then it came, he looked at it. Yeah, lovely, we're chatting. The guy that plays Maximus, um, I think it's Aaron Morton. He was there looking at it. I mean, he, in the show, he's actually riding inside the, the, the Verti Bird. So there was, I got some pictures of him looking at it. And then um, the guy... If, um, sorry, if I may just um, cut in, I think the reason they didn't want to give it to him is because he's crazy enough to make one. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> quite, possibly. quite possibly. He's a he's a he's a tall guy. You know, he's a he's a big guy. Yeah. He's a he towers over everybody. So um, very nice, charming chats about the, yeah how we made it and everything like that. I was I was pinching myself underneath, sort of like underneath, thinking this is just ridiculous. And then yeah. uh, when we went over there. I was with the guy who's our licensed guy from Amazon. And I said, oh, look, Todd Howard's over there. Should we go and say hello to him? So he said, do you know him? So I said, yeah, 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 of course. So we went over and Todd Howard was chatting to some influencers. And he was, I don't know, he's doing, he doing the number circulating. And I tapped him on the shoulder and he turned around and he gave me this massive hug and said, oh, Chris, lovely to see you. Then I was obviously introducing him to, to the guy from Amazon. It was, a, it was the most wow. moment of my life, I have to say. And... Um, well, lovely people. Um, so in the end, uh, Jonathan Nolan's ended up with the uh, the the first model. Oh, really? So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but that's the wow. story. Was a bit bonkers. In the whole, what a, so I wasn't invited, but I ended up cake crushing it anyway. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Uh, the whole, I'm making the most of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to be dining out you on that took one. The birdie bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they, and of course, the metal one is still there. I've got a photograph still in the in the in the display but, case and everything. But you said it would be like around four or five hundred euros or dollars. Four fifty, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. But, and and give, uh, I mean, just my nerd brain is is doing the math here, like investment wise. <laughs> and if you, if you look at the Haslab uh, uh, Razor Crest, for example, that's all plastic, and that was about five six hundred bucks. Yeah, even. that's a great value. And, yeah, and that was that was crowdfunded also. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know how... See, this one will have lights inside. It's got yeah. a pilot that's taken from the original CAD of the show. It's got a minigun in wow. it. Wow. One door is open and one door is closed, so you can see inside. It's got a stand that it rests on with a cantilever base. So when it's standing there, most angles, you can't see the base. The wheels come off so you can have it flying or you can have it on the ground. The propellers will turn, yeah. the props will turn because they've got motors in them, and they will turn in idle nice and slowly. Um, oh, nice. It, that's it, a great deal. That's, uh, that's I, really... So the, the argument is, will we sell a few hundred or a few thousand? Right. 10,000. Yeah. And my feeling but, is... But you're also doing these pre-orders. I mean, does that help you to be able to scale this versus just, you know, putting it out there for sale? Well, I mean, yeah, it does. It's not in not exactly but scale it. For, so Amazon have allowed us, they haven't quite enabled it yet, but they said the one... one Normally, if you're uh, an Amazon FBA seller, you mm-hmm. only put something up for pre-order for one month. And they said it's unheard of to allow people to do more than one month. But they've managed to get us. They said they had got someone before with six months. We told them that the pit boy wouldn't be ready until December. So they've given, or no, November. They've given us a nine-month okay. <laughs> nine window for the pre-order. So, yes, the pre-orders are very wow. important because it's a very expensive thing to make. The Verti yeah, yeah. is going to be coming out in Q1 or the end of Q1 2025 because it, there okay. is no way it can be made any quicker. Um, it's extremely expensive to tool and it's a very expensive to make. So it only really makes sense at, at if I sell more than 3,000, it starts to it starts to break even yeah. for us. And obviously, wow. 
my my feeling is that something that gorgeous will really work. But I am l- in my company, but also <laughs> in the world, I'm like an individual shouting about something that sounds like. But I'm I'm going with this example, right? The Pokeballs. We were told you would only sell a few hundred or a few thousand, and we've sold uh, a quarter of a million of those at the hundred dollar. Mm. Now we don't make that money. Obviously, that money goes to all the retailers and stuff. But it's been a very successful product for us. So I believe that people want quality, and I think they, when they get it, they're not disappointed and they're prepared to pay for it. What people hate is being taken for suckers and being ripped off, and that's something that I hate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we have uh, we spoke with Joost Assink, which is a Dutch uh, model builder for uh, the Batman licensed Batman models. Um, in a previous one podcast. six scale, yeah, yeah, it's one six scale, so that's that's huge stuff. Yeah, uh, uh, and 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 he also get, yeah, showed us a bit of the behind the scenes on, on how how it goes on on designing such a model and 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 shipping it. And he 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 at a point had such a low margin that he actually had to sell his own dioramas yeah. and models. To, to buy stuff for promotional yeah. uh, uh really. expenses. Interesting. He would pose inside of them. He had to sell to pay off the tooling yeah. 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 to be yeah. able to, to, to sell his product. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but I, not... I, would th- yeah. I would think, though, if you have the vertebrate and you would have like separate products, I'm not sure if the flea, for example, is in scale with the vertebrate. I don't think... Ah, well, there's a very good uh, story about that, too, because oh. I would like <laughs> to say the, the vertebrate is, is 143 scale. If I was to make a 118 scale vertebrate, I could probably get inside it. So um, it's a 143 scale. I don't think anyone would be complaining, though. <laughs> no, but it, and, and I, I have to say with a flea, when I retire, my one thing that I would love to do is make a full-size one, a proper full-size oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about that before. Yeah, we, I, we, we even looked at, well, Chris and I, yeah, Chris and I actually have emailed back and forth the different working cars that are kind of similar oh, yeah. in their build. <laughs> but well, I mean, if it, if I wanted to buy a vertebrate, like I, I would need like these guys to go with it. Uh, <laughs> and... Yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> but anyway, so the yeah. 143 scale, uh, the guys would be tiny, but the, the yeah. Yeah. there are I have got a design and a working model of a 143 scale flea. Um, oh, really? Yes, I want to make one that there's they're this size. I want to make one yeah. again, like the quality of a watch, not like a dinky toy. I want to make it all with metal parts, lights that actually light yeah. up and you go near it. So uh, front light and rear light, the engine light, and then a uh, hood that opens and you can see the engine inside. These will be expensive. Yeah. So the question is, yeah. Richard is saying to me, that's my business partner, see how the mini Pokeball goes. If people accept yeah. that something small can be expensive, uh, when I say expensive, something between $60 and $100 for the small one, it's every bit as complicated as the big one. Yeah, my view is every bit as complicated as the big one, even harder to make. Yeah. But the sort of quality that you have to use a magnifying glass to look at. But yeah, and I want to do one of yeah. the... I want to do the fleas, the station wagon, the, the uh, Rocket sixty nine. I want to do the. Wow. Uh, um, I've got all. I've got models made of them all. They look awesome. Wow. So yeah. But Rick, Richard is the voice of reason. He he's the like Chris comes up with things and stuff, and then Richard's the one that can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? That's that's, yeah, that's the yeah, partnership yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, said, <laughs> said that Richard said if. Because I said if, if I did everything I could do, we would we would go bust. And then Richard said, <laughs> we did if we did everything he wanted to do, which would be nothing, yeah. we would also go bust. <laughs> <laughs> it's between us. Yeah, so yeah, balance, balance. yeah, balance. yeah, yeah that's yeah. the yeah. yinging name. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's very cool. So, um, so are you? Do you have stuff on you? Are you traveling around with with uh, products as you're going around? Well, uh, well I, you know. Uh, this is my the second part of this because yeah. there's some very nice other things coming. But for the oh, se- wow. for the second part of my trip, the first part was to deliver these products, and the second mm. part was to go to uh, Pokeball retailers. Um, as you said, I'm mm. flying to uh, LA and then then to New York, then going up to Connecticut. So I'm going around some different different retailers in the next week. Mm-hmm. But I do have one or two other things. I have a couple of other things that I can show Ooh, you. Okay, um, yeah. Um, let me just, I've got to move out of the way here. Uh, yeah. The, right, first of all, first of all, I'm going to tell you, first of all, I'm going to quickly show you this. Um, this, w- when we did the soft lines, I want to do some things that weren't 
necessarily um, from the show, but were, were basically conventional merchandise, which I'd never really done before. Okay. Um, in world. Yeah. So in world, so there's nice, nice bit of packaging. Looks like it's come from the from the vault. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then this is uh, wrapped in tissue, which is in the vault. They have a shower in Vault Thirty Three, and this is the shower curtain material. Well, look, <laughs> oh, and then nice. this would be uh, in the UK. We call this a purse. In America, I think they call oh, it yeah. either a wallet or a pocketbook. But or a billfold or something. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. So oh. this, this nice. Oh, that's so nice. It's, it's, yeah. it's um, oiled leather, but. There's a game. Mine will and... stay empty though with all the stuff coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, exactly. Very funny. But the thing with the thing <laughs> is, there is discussion about whether or not. Well, first, one of the first things that was said was, "Well, we don't really have that many women shopping on the the gear store." So I said, "Well, perhaps that's because there's no more women." So also, if you got guys shopping on the the game the gear store, surely they must be buying things for women at some point, their girlfriends or partners or whatever. So having product like this, and I've got a I've got a male version of this too, a, a billfold wallet, a small one. Oh, oh really? Oh, how, nice. how many how many caps does it fit? How many caps <laughs> does it fit? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you need you need these, you need these. Um, so that's one of the things I've got, but this is just like a spare that I had um, with me because. Uh, now, are are you guys? Like, uh, last time we talked, you were about to to have your own factory as well. Do you guys have the factory going? Is that part of where you're producing some of these things, or or what do you or, or yeah, warehouse well, we, or what we, are you doing? We no, we have um, we we wanted to expand out from the original factory we had, so we've got. Uh, but we use contract subcontract factories. I mean, we mm -hmm. want to go mm -hmm. to a bag maker who, um, you know, makes oh, yeah. makes, makes lovely stuff. But uh, so the, yeah. the other thing that I'm carrying with me is the original Pit Boy uh, hand, the the plastic model that was made to go and get to go and get approval. Oh really? Oh, so this oh, is sweet. wow! Look at that. So this one, Ooh. this one has um, the grill in it, which is now gone because that was wrong. Uh, that was put there. It has, oh, it has these okay. Red, red bu orange buttons, which are incorrect as well, and there've been some slight geometry changes. It also has the wrong catch at the bottom, which has been changed. So this was a preliminary. Oh, okay. It has the first, uh, this is memory foam inside, so it has the first, but the real memory foam is going to be brown. The real one in the show doesn't have any foam in it because it goes on the leather part of the arm. So we're obviously having okay. to... Oh, yeah. In this, in the one that we're making, this has just been, um, uh, it's just, what do you call it? It's just a print out. But when you turn this, it will turn along the top and you'll get, a different animation each time. There's about thirty between thirty and fifty different animations of of the Pit Boy walking, uh, Volt Boy, yeah. walking, various things. Um, these won't be. These won't have any special features or functions. The screen is a TFT LCD um, monochrome green. It'll have sound. The sound will actually that they'll we're going to actually instead of having the grill there, we're going to have the grill here where you can't see it. So it's going to be hidden behind. Oh, okay. It. But it's going to have all the sounds from the show. That, that you hear or that you see or most of them awesome um when you go to the radio the fm radio it won't have an fm radio per se but it will play there's about i don't know five or ten sounds radio station sounds that you hear in the show we've got that audio some of them are quite long some wow them, so that that because yeah, because this is the module you would need for an actual radio yeah right? yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 we had so much yeah. fun doing that. there's a story about that one as well about how to make it at, at, at the last minute um getting the audio for that but this one we're going to be using the correct audio um so when you were talking about the metal this front part here is metal the whole of the front okay this is that's this, one of the first questions people asked yeah uh, this is going to be white portion injection abs mark. or what is it yeah abs yeah. this will be abs there's really it would it would be too difficult and too heavy to make in any other way but this this whole front part that you get is going this whole front part is going to be metal the whole bar Excellent. Um, the Tritan, which is that really lovely, clear, almost glass-like plastic that you can't tell isn't isn't uh, isn't glass, and then you've got the more excellent CD behind it there. So, so um, even though they don't operate as far as the radio and the and the uh, ra ra either radinator, Geiger hand, whatever you want to call it, uh, 
is there still they have like a clear plastic yeah, uh, more, piece yeah. on on the front of them or what how does yeah, it it will have uh, uh, it has what looks like a tuning dial i don't know if you can see that but it's yeah tuning it and we'll do it here. oh yeah so oh, it does slide up and down though yeah, okay it, it does is it is there any chance of that lighting, or is that was well, that just is, too much to? Is there a chance of it lighting? There is a chance of it lighting, and um, I think there would be a good chance of that lighting up. One of the things I'd like to happen is I'd like it to have a light that shines down onto the stand, so that when you put it on the stand, oh. it's different coloured light yeah. on the charging the charging state, which would be very cool because on the stand, well, it reminded me of. Uh, it kind of reminded me of this. This actually. Uh, so this is the the charging stand or the stand for. Where do I put this on, Chris? Like that. Yeah. Um, when you charged this, yes. Uh, this would it has a light. It breathes right as it as it charges. Is that kind of that one? Is a light. Uh, that's the sort of thing I want to do. Definitely. In fact, if you let yeah. me just jump to one side, I'll show you the stand quickly. Sure. But do yeah, you do that yeah, I'll, I'll show you the stand because you'll be you'll be really interested to know this as well. Then um, getting the scoops. Yeah. Yes, we like doing... Well, the first product we ever did, the wand, it came in um, a, a lovely box, which was basically looked like it was made of dragon skin. But we realised... The Chimera wand. Yeah, we realised that people, when they get something like this, want to display it. And the thing with the wand in a box yeah. is that at the end of the day, you put it back in the box and shut the box, and it's not really good to display it. Right. So from that day on, we made things that displayed the product because that's what fans want. Yeah. So with this... Yeah. With this one, this is the prototype stand, and this is the 3D print. Oh, okay. And we want the stand to be really yeah. simple. We don't want to have any holes or things that you wouldn't expect to see in this. We want it to actually mm -hmm. rest on it. It's a weird old shape. You, if you rest it on the floor, it doesn't really sit anywhere nicely. However, at the back, it has this feature, which is in mm -hmm. the, the show, and we reckon right. that you unplug this and made oh. nice. <laughs> that's then, good then a lot of people will be happy about that <laughs> then you can take the stand and you could insert the stand oh, cool. into that oh yeah and then it would just oh. it would just rest on it and it would just rest that's on it. lovely and then you could put this in a little uh holder and then you could yeah. put the usb oh. there now the beauty of that is that when it's so well engineered yeah yeah, yeah. The beauty of that is that you can plug it in and you can have this on your nightstand or your bedside table if you're in the UK, and you can have it as a clock at night. So it has a clock function. And because of that, it also has to have an alarm function. And to give you an idea how cool it is, the, the alarm sound that you get with it is the sirens and the bombs falling, which comes from... <laughs> from which is really cool. That's, that's funny. Anyway, that's this thing is... <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the story. Like the picture that you had, where you you did your video with your hands, when you did a bit of yeah. like you did, you must have done a um, garbage Fakery, mask yeah. in yeah, in, in uh, Premiere or whatever. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It was this picture, this this actual product? Oh, it is a photograph mm -hmm. in my hotel room of this. Oh wow! I used. Yeah, you can see the window and the reflection on the on the on the, on uh, the, on to the be screen. Fair, yeah, you, you, to be fair, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could. It was lit that way. I then used uh -huh. generative AI in Photoshop to get rid of this. I then colored oh, it okay. down. And then I rendered yeah. this in, a, in KeyShot to exactly be wow. in the same position, right? And I rendered the right. screen. But I rendered the screen with a reflection of a window in it to look like it was. So the oh, one okay. is a composite of about five different images. Um, and it's yeah. the Call of Duty mobile. for a product shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was taken on the mobile yes. phone in, in the hotel room in the morning wow. at 7 a.m. in the morning to quickly do it ready for the presentation. Wow. Oh, wow. You but would so never know perfect. that. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, you would never know that. No, and wow. this means that is crazy. That I'm able to render uh, animations in here that are from the animations from the actual product. So I'm doing a few. If you go, on, if you go onto the Bethesda Gear Store, you'll see like, an animation of it. And yeah. animation is real from the, it is from the actual thing that we're doing, but in fact it's a render, it's a rendered animation because I just don't have mm. the product actually. I didn't no, that's edit, fair edit enough for, me. for one day. I took it down to the activation site for South by Southwest, and that's where it is right now. But it is very. I mean, it's it's awesome to look at. It has this boot up sequence where all the 
text scrolls past and oh, nice. then of course the just like the yeah and then the clock is going to be it's going to be showing the time exactly as it does in the show with the big letters really big on the screen but but where Isn't would you screen... source yeah. oh sorry go ahead vince <laughs> so uh, it's a monochrome tft screen is there where where would you find such a thing in the square display as well um to be fair I've got a funny feeling it might not be monochrome. I don't know. I think it's probably a color TFT. Okay. We've done it in monochrome green. And just gold black. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's that's the deal. Is, is that screen the same size as the as the Pip Boy 2001 that you did? No. Or is that smaller no, or bigger? It, it, is, it is. When you see it, it's a, it, you're, you're thinking it's quite large. It's surprisingly small when you see it in real life. Yeah. The reason is because... You're thinking about adding one to your old Pip Boy, right? Yeah, because... I, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> It yeah. won't. It won't. It's it's much smaller. The big boy screen is bigger than Bit Boy Three Two Thousand. Yeah, okay. Wow, I mean the two thousand screen was smaller than the three thousand. So so this is this is quite a bit smaller. Yeah. Which, which I... tell me this. I I had heard the reason why because this is this Pit Boy has a lower profile to it. I had heard part of the reason for that was just re- reasonability of filming wise, uh, that... with actors walking around and having to do yeah, things. They needed. They wanted something that was a little. Smaller well, and tighter, I, and I can tell you what though there are two. Uh-huh. Versions. There's a there's a, a man's version of, from a scale point of view. There was a man's version and a woman's version. So ah, okay, we we picked the man's version in the end because actors these particular actors have quite thin arms. We might um, scale it up by a few percent. You know, we might make it just a few percent bigger, not the whole thing, but just the. Um, well, with the memory foam, it should it should fit most yeah, no, everybody. You though, no, to be fair, no one will know. No, no one will be able to tell. Yeah, you see, this is the wow. Nice. So yeah, we... that looks awesome. It's only just low, low profile. Yeah. yeah, I like that though so much. All right, I, I love was... the silver as well. It's very sci-fi. Yeah, and and and, and, the, and the what do you call it the um the distressing that it'll be very cool. Yeah, yeah. This the, don't forget we here. The weight with the, with the front being a die cast and the back being the ABS, is there going to need to be something counterweighting that, or is uh, do you like do you know? Well, actually, kinda... to be fair, when you've got the memory foam on your arm and it's squeezing in, yeah, yeah, it feels a nice weight. It'll hold it just um, fine. Yeah, oh, or it's fine. I mean, I think. Wow. Yeah, nice. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I think it's going to be. Well, we've got a big year. We've got the the mini balls are coming have come out. We've got the um, beast ball, which is which is a completely new departure for us in terms of the the way the pokeball is designed because it's inside but out. That, right. That light diffused must yeah. be a heck of a chore. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I could show you. Let me. Yes, you you kind of show us as much as you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, yeah. So here we go. Okay. Oh, oh wow. there you go. It's pretty. Inside oh. is a is a is a comb of very very clear plastic. This is handmade, by the way. This is a yeah. sample, so it's not. And it has steps in the cone. Inside there are there are flashlights like this. This is where we got the idea. And when you, um, there are a whole oh, wow. Uh, about 18 LEDs or 20 LEDs around the back. That looks cool the way that is even open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They line up yeah. inside and everywhere where they encounter a step, the light is ejected out. So the net oh, result wow. is that when you yeah, that's uh, great. when you put it together, you get quite oh, an wow. even glow. It was quite a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Is this is not that's done difficult properly. to do. Um they'll Where's be... the proximity sensor? Where, uh, well, where did these, you put these that are at? Metal. These are metal, uh-huh. and inside oh, it's in it. it's conductive. Uh, the 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 metal is inside. So oh, okay, cool. wow. basically gotcha. So and you can see here. Let's turn it off. It's got those two metal contacts that fly up and touch. Oh the, yeah, yeah, wow. They touch the screw. Mm-hmm. It's it's a very elegant design. We went through three or four different designs with yeah. flexions and everything. Um, oh, the other wow. thing you're going to love, big engineers, and you are going okay. to love, is that the Hole. For... I like how Chris called us engineers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Model right. train engineers. The, uh, <laughs> the hole for the for the plug socket is behind this piece of silicon, and basically, oh, just push. I'll show you. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a, re a revolving. I know uh, it's it's yeah. just it's just a bit of silicon. I show you it's you you just um, push it in and you can right. see it. It dent. It, wow! It, it just goes in like that's not a bad idea. Oh, that's, that's Does it nice. make it waterproof as well? <laughs> well <laughs> I don't think it would make it waterproof, but the problem is that you have with it is the glow has to come right to the edge. Uh, oh, yeah. There's nowhere to put a door. Light bleed. A simple thing yeah. would be to just have a plug which you squeeze and pull out. But if you have that, you'll lose it. We didn't want to lose it. This thing tucks all the way around. The thing is that you need the light to come all around the edge. There's nowhere to put any fixes or screw holes or anything that you can hold this piece on so it wraps rain it now because people want our products as heritage products although this is welded together you can pull these ellipse apart there are two uh, triangular screws you can do that and you can undo the pcb and then you can change the battery but you'll only need to change okay. the battery, uh you know maybe five years time or something but this is very nice it's kind of innovative idea of just having the thing or poke through the uh, wow, yeah. it's is, is that the actual plug? It, 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 do you send a USB with it, or does yeah, it just work with standard? A, it'll have a USB. C. No, it'll have a USB C. It will. Oh, okay. Anyway, oh, so okay. Um, and it nice. fits. It just about fits in the in the same case that we had before. But here you can see oh, smart. we've had yeah. some. Oh, that looks great! Little wow. slices out. It's it's a lovely. Um, that's the thing, Chris. You make you also make these packages that are like, <laughs> in this case, one that was intended to be displayed, but on the flips and the way it even opens is just crazy. But like even the stuff that you make that's meant to be thrown away, quote unquote, is always like the newspaper, the oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the the box that's I, that's, I want, that's you know. I want the rolls yeah. and rolls of the Fallout newspaper packing material. And, <laughs> and I gotta keep all this stuff. Yeah, you should. You should. You should email me, and I have, um, I, I have one or two, one or two completely pristine flat newspapers left. Oh wow! Wow, there you go. If you want one, yeah. of them, I'll send you a message. Wow. I can send. Yes, I, um, I really enjoyed the, the um, the the pit boy stand, uh, like instruction uh, folder. Oh, what the the what the one for the two thousand? The that Bluetooth one. one. Yeah. Yeah, for the for the Bluetooth stands, the the fact that it like the all, all the instructions come in a very like proper envelope. Yeah. yeah, I think that just looks incredible. It is cool. Yeah, it's you like see, you got to keep that with it. The thing is, to me, there's no point in doing something if you're not going to enjoy it. So you were saying earlier about the communicator. Do open that. It does say inside. This is the property of Starfleet. Please return it to your lowest place. But the thing is, it's so easy to do that kind of thing. Um, I find that um, it's slightly depressing that that it's not done more, but not, not, in, not in a bad way. I just, I just love the idea. When I was at school, I think we've had this discussion already, Jeremy, but I'm going to tell everyone anyway again. I had yeah, a favorite project. I was about 12, and it was to invent a world, like a, an island, and do the passport for it and do the letters of, like... To... Oh, we didn't talk about this. Oh, well. well yeah. <laughs> basically, when I was, when I was about t 12, uh, <clears throat> I'm the eldest of five. Uh, now my dad remarried, and I'm the eldest of six, but I was the eldest of five. And um, we lived, my mum's a doctor, my dad's a doctor. We had nannies, but also we had, the surgery was on the side of the house. So they kind of, when I got to a certain age, it was like, after your yourselves, kids. And friends recently I've talked to have said, you were just like wild in your house because there was never any adults around. You just did whatever you liked. <laughs> and it's compounded by the fact that my mother, when I was about 12, my mother said, if you mess about again, you kids, I'm going to I'm going to send the television back to the uh, higher place. In those days, we hired television, uh, rented it. And I came home from school the next day and the television was on the doorstep. And from the age of 12 to 16, I had we had no television in the house. And what it meant was I started painting and making things and we had lots of craft stuff. And and I loved that sort of thing. And then I had this project at school, which was to make um make up a universe basically an island with a with a population the road signs the stamps the postmarks you know the the passport the letters from the council all that kind of thing and world I just, building yeah. yeah it was just the most i still remember it now as the sort of thing that i it absorbed me for a whole year of my school 
and the thought of designing the passport and looking at what passports look like and stuff. And so now I'm 60 years old. I, I've spent my life wanting to make things real that aren't that are imaginary, but make them really real for people. And so that's yeah. only this is like a dream come true. And so why, when I'm doing it, yeah. like, wouldn't I add all those things to it? I mean, I really can. And there's something amazing about having an idea these days and doing the CAD for it, then doing the 3D print and seeing it actually work. Um, this thing here has a, you can see the thing coming up, has a mechanism that pulls the band up. And to design that in the car going along, going to work and sort of think, how could we do it? What bits would have to go? And then make one, then get a 3D print of it and see it working is incredible. It's just so exciting. So, yeah, I spend, I mean, it, it, yeah, the hardest thing is is when you come up against um, other people who are in the value chain, like licenses, companies, that don't really understand what you're trying to do and want to get in the way of it. Um, and then... You're, you're trying to sell magic and they're trying to sell products. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And of course, there's a crossover. And that's the other thing about, about cost. Uh, one of the retailers we went to said, oh, well, what people do is they collect your stuff so they can sell it and make a profit. And I said, well, mm. if you do that. Who are they selling it to? Because the people they're selling it to are not willing to pay more money. So, you know, what people do is, is sell the product at the price that, it, that it's at the value price for the product. And, I mean, we sold a lot of fleas, those fusion fleas, that we knew people were making a profit on, but we felt that we could sell it for the right price. That was the best thing to do. We have obviously given for charity and we did raise quite a lot of money for charity at various different um, good charities, actually. But yeah, we still need to do a charity thing for your. Uh, I, I found this oh, yeah. interesting about you. Chris, Chris has volunteer, been a volunteer as far as emergency response, right? Or yeah. a, a, less, a volunteer been, and been uh, doing it less recently. But yes, it was. Uh, it's, but it's, still. In the UK, it's called it's called CFR, which is Community First Response. Okay. And the CFRs are all around the country in the UK, and I'm, I'm sure other clubs have the same thing, where you're trained up to do uh, re resus, I mean CPR, and you, you have a kit, so you're trained up to use oxygen, take observations. You can't administer any drugs or anything, but you, you get a training, and then if someone in my locality within a sort of five- or six-mile radius calls for an ambulance... And the ambulance team feels that it's urgent enough to require immediate attention. Obviously, if you're in the UK, if you're having a heart attack and you, you're, you're, well, should I say you're lucky, then the ambulance should get to you in about eight to 10 minutes. And you, if you're young ish, I mean, 60 is considered young, I guess, but younger even more, they'll send, they'll dispatch an emergency car and they'll probably dispatch a helicopter. So within 20 minutes, you should be either dead or back alive. But the, but the CFRs, they live even closer, can go and start CPR immediately. And they have a system in the UK, GoodSAM. And once you're a CFR, you can put GoodSAM on your mobile phone. And then it rings your mobile phone if there's an emergency within 100 or 200 meters of where you are at any time. And then you can go and assist. So you can be walking in the high street and it'll, GoodSAM will go off. And anyone who's got that app phone who's been trained will then run to the thing to do it. it so it's a good system. And I did a few ambulance ride outs as a result of it, which was amazing. I spent a day in an ambulance a couple of times uh, going to, you know, 999 calls with the blue lights going and stuff. Right. Like that. Um, but I mean, as a CFR, you don't get you don't get cars or lights or anything. You, you drive yourself at the speed limit to the to the to the place to the emergency. So I've, I've had some uh, things that I've attended. They were good. But anyway, we raised some money for that because despite the fact that it's a, a service that the NHS provides it's entirely uh, populated by volunteers and it's entirely funded by the volunteers so, that, so you have to buy your kit from the nhs from the national health service from the trust but you have to pay for it yourself so i went and raised some so i new kits more oxygen more you know more de defibrillators and that kind of thing but it's quite it's quite cool but anyway it's amazing seeing the passion of fans who want to um buy products and have them you know they're People are always writing to me and saying, you, you do have some prototypes. Could we buy those or donate to charity with the prototypes and stuff? Like that. Really? So, uh, it's good to be able to do it. Well, you, you, the flea, you made some on the fleas for charity, if speaking of which. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, the fleas, you had a few that were left over and people wanted to get them and you were able to 
get money to go to some good charities and stuff for yeah. those too. It's, it's I, good. Got the, I got the Things, military so. flea, the, the the special edition. Which one did you get? Yeah, the, the military one. The, the, the oh yeah, one. yeah, that's nice. Yeah, well, see, now I wanted yeah. to do so many more different ones. I had a flea which had skidoo skis underneath it instead of wheels. <laughs> oh really? And it is that's great. Really, really nice. And the great thing about Bethesda. Is you go to the, those, that military flea and the, and the, all the different ones I did, like the sugar bombs one and the, the nuclear cola, they never appeared in the game. And yet, go to Bethesda and say, I've got this great idea. I think if the fleas existed in the world, there would be different versions of them, like, like every vehicle there is. And Bethesda just take, they take that all with both hands and say, yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, that'd be lovely. And that is to work with a, to work with a license like Bethesda. There's a guy who's now a head of licensing, David Evans. He is a most charming guy. Um, he used to work for Sony. Um, the guy before him, Mike Coaches, is incredible. Still still works at Bethesda in the US, but he's uh, graduated over to a different job. But David Evans, based in... expanded the line as well. Uh, like, uh, you notice that all of a sudden a lot of more licensed stuff has been coming out recently. Yeah, and that's David yes. Evans' work. He is he, based in the UK. Yeah. He's a lovely guy. And, and I have to say, in this business... There's nothing better than working with people that you like, who like you and you get on. I mean, it is such a privilege to do a job which is so much fun and um, the people that you meet are also fun. And I think um, the hardest bit about the job is actually is actually the retail side. It's actually the, the gap between doing it and the customer. And that is, at the moment in the world, is a very difficult, it's a very difficult zone a lot of oh, well, you can basically cater to any customer right now, and you just have to find the right niche uh, to, to sell it to, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 basically, your 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 customer base is now infinite because the yeah, as you said before, everybody should be able to get their hands on a thing in the world right now. But it is up to you to find your best value uh, vehicle to to get that yeah. stuff out there. And, yeah, and I have yeah. to say, and I, I, I know this is a death knell for retailers generally, uh, the traditional retailers, is that online, and specifically Amazon, for example, is, and I have to say it because in discussions we've had, Amazon is the biggest online retailer, and it's something like 55% of the market. The next biggest one is 5%, and it's eBay. So there, there, is, there is your issue. If you go to GameStop or you go to target or fye or one of those retailers they are getting crushed into a smaller and smaller space there i mean gamestop is looking at buying you know it it, it can't invest in expensive products people don't want to go in and buy them it's people, going good so far uh people want to invest uh, retailers are struggling to take on expensive products and yet when if you go into some good retail outlets and i'm talking about london if you go to london and you go where my my son lives in shoreditch which is east london and it's such a vibrant place and there's vibrant retailers doing clever things with their stores and making, you know, that is where it has to go. I think the big old fashioned way where you just buy something, stick it on the shelf and people buy it. And you don't, you, you know, the death spiral is there's no money to advertise. There's no money to market. We need a margin of 50 or 60 points. Um, the customer getting less and less value. So they're selling cheaper and cheaper products. It's a death spiral. And that is something I want to fight against. And the, my, um, my ideas come from years ago. We worked on uh, when I worked for a company called Cambridge Consultants. They were working on mobile phones, and there was some talk about the cheaper and cheaper phones Nokia were doing. They were kind of driving for a phone that you would give away with a SIM card, so it'd be very cheap, very almost like a ten dollar phone. Ooh. But at the same time, people like Samsung and Apple were going, obviously, on a trajectory towards the thousand dollar phone. So the fact is, at the end of the day. In the world, what has become ubiquitous? The quality, the quality experience, quality investment. So I am hoping with the products we make, because we're a small company, we cannot compete with the pilot, pilot high, set it cheap sort of mentality. So I'm very much hoping that our products will have value in their own right and people will see that and, and be prepared to pay the... Want, want, but it, it comes down to choosing the right product and doing it beautifully. And so that means, as you said, not having products that don't work properly or don't, don't do the thing you want. 
or and not adding too many. Points. I've I've got a product. <laughs> you can. But, what? What, <laughs> one of my pet peeves with the with the watch is that you can't put it in day day month month year 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 year. It's because it's not the right way. You do it right way in the, in the <laughs> U.S. Hang on, the U.S. does it the other way around. Hang on, no, you can't. No, you can do that. Oh, oh, there you go. Richard, Richard, sort it out so that you could have it in any, uh, in any. Uh, yeah, you can. I can. I can go and find the. Or well, maybe it's the settings. It's a setting. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have a reason to charge it again. <laughs> Darn, I, I wanted. I wanted to take it from Vince. Now he's gonna have a reason to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's know, a beautiful watch. Do, do you know what though? I can send you one, so you don't have to worry about <laughs> me. I've got. Oh wow! Here's here's the app. On the app, at the side here's the man- yeah. manual. Okay, oh, home okay. screen settings. One thing that was cool about the the watch to me is the the case that you made. Oh yeah. The, which I didn't know was a one company product until uh, some of these things. Um, I noticed there's not not everything's on your website. You know why? Uh, you know on why? On the one company no, website. Hey, why is that? I'll quickly say it's because it's 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 a, a CE for Bethesda. Design, Years, for Bethesda, they didn't want it to oh. be a one company product. It was sold as a Bethesda product. They stopped us actually. Right. They didn't want us to interact with the customers about troubleshooting or anything. But what oh, we, yeah. we'd like to do is negotiate with them to take over control of it so that we can now do it as a license product with different colors. So you'll never be able to get the CE again. Yeah. We have an idea for a, for a stealth one in black. We have an idea for a red, Ooh. like a um, search and rescue red kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, there's some good options out there that we want to do, but it, it, and we wanted to do some upgrades to the, um, to the uh, app, but it means taking the app over because, hey, yeah, look. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's it, it, and show how it opens again. Show, the, that's what's cool about it too. Is the little the thing where it, it turns. Get the, uh, it's, yeah, oh, you have these two. Yeah, yeah. these two cross latching well, that, parts. That's, that is so cool. Yeah, that, that is designed. Um, to be fair, the, the case, the basic concept of the case was designed obviously by Istvan Pelli uh, from Bethesda. It's, it's, um, oh, okay, such a cool dude. But he yeah. came to us with yeah. the idea and said, look, I've got this thing. Actually, that mechanism yeah. is used in polar cases, in polar exhibitions and things. He showed me for locking cases together. Oh. And it usually works the other way. Oh, really? But what you do is you turn it this way and it locks all the cases together. So we just adapted it for that. But also, there's, there are things in that case that you will have known when you've got it. Um, the fact that the hinges have bushes in them so that when you open it, you can leave it open for a certain angle. And that itself oh. is very challenging because when you make stuff, the difference between being too stiff and too light is actually very, very slight. And the, the um, what do you call it, the tolerance stack up can be such a problem the flopping open or you can't even open it at all. But that was a, a really nice little design feature. The, also, the, um, the thing it rests in is polyurethane. And that is very difficult to make without having lots of little bubbles on the surface. There's a, there's a big uh, oh. reject rate. So the way we made that, which was a novel way, was to make um, an injection molded thin layer of um, TPR, which is thermoplastic resin rubber. And then that was put in uh-huh. the foam mold. And then it was PU backfilled with foam afterwards. So you could get the quality. Oh, of that's it, clever. But have the PU behind it. There was a few things like that. Wow! Quite a challenge, actually. That was a, that whole project was a real challenge. And the but the mechanical part of it, the watch body, which again isn't made like a traditional watch, so it was difficult. And also, you remember we're only making, I don't know, fifty, eighty thousand units. We're not making millions. We can't invent new technology for it. We've got to go with what's out there. No. Um, yeah. Was it? Yeah. It was. It was a. It was a challenge. It was a real challenge. But we had that done. And, and shipped about a year or, si- or eight months or nine months before it, it was released. And the software was being worked on until about one minute before it was released. So, and it nearly brought wow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> When we went, because it was so secretive inside Bethesda that suddenly about, mm. I don't know, like six or eight weeks before it was due to be released, somebody in Bethesda woke up to realize that they hadn't done all the normal sort of testing. So they threw everybody onto it. And at one point we had hundreds open issues of things that need to be resolved and they were saying just put your team on it and we were going yeah our team is this guy that just doesn't sleep 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, it, yeah, so it, yeah, we got a few, we drafted a few other people in to help, but it was a very, very challenging project. And, it, and of course, it's, it has to work with iOS, it has to work with Android, it has to work with every, fla- every flavor for the last three or four versions. It has to, uh, and some have require you to have permissions. Some require you absolutely not to have permissions. I, I will, I will find out about that. That I looked on the manual. I'll find out about the time because I know Richard did it, so they could do the different times. So yeah, I, it does different times, but it doesn't do the times that I like. <laughs> I'm, You're living that's... in the wrong country, there, Ben. Living in the wrong country. That's it. <laughs> the time i mean we talked about timelines before but now i mean that was before you got doing some of these contracts like start to finish like when you were even talking about the new pip boy they contacted you that that wasn't very long ago that they first contacted you right yeah oh look you got it right there vince day four now okay yeah so i want i want the bottom one reversed you want it day the bottom one to be date yeah yeah so the numerical one the bottom Mods, one has to, has to be day day month month year 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 and you can't select that oh i see okay oh. take it back yeah it's all good <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna... if you were in space they don't do it that way in space <laughs> do, 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 do you getting adjust these Sorry. things <laughs> can i just say looking at the one above it which is um day day month month do you have trouble remembering the year yeah i do Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good but but speaking of time i mean like i said from from when you were talking about the new pip boy they didn't contact you that long ago i mean that, no. that sounds like that yeah, was no, really that, recent that, that's why if anyone wants to know why you're ready till november um that's that's why i mean in a way, a pre-order is a version of uh, it's it's kind of a version of crowdfunding, it, it, though it's not. It's just a it's just a good way of working out how many you're going to make. But whereas we decided, I, I I made a decision when we started doing the Pip Boy that nothing would get in the way of it. So that's why the Vertibirds back slightly because that, to be fair, is the thing. If the Pip Boy is what people want. It's also a good way for our company to make revenue this year and to sort of do a great product. So that is the main, yeah, the main focus. The Lucy bag, I know on Bethesda Gear Store is up for um, it. Put your register your interest. But when we go live, oh. uh, when we go live on Amazon, it'll be pre-order. Mm-hmm. And then okay. the Vertibird, because it's more than nine months away, and it will be really the beginning of next year before we can ship it. That one is register your interest. And to be fair. Unless we get the right kind of a level of interest, right, we may not start that project. Uh, we're not no, start, we may go to tooling. The tooling's about right. You're also dependent on how big of a success or flop the show is going to be, most likely. Well, like why Fallout seventy six? Yeah, you see, now I was yeah. excited about Fallout seventy six, and Richard kept saying, "Yeah, but you know, it might not work, and you know, it might not work." And I was thinking, "Well, how do we know that?" But I have to say that he was right. But even so, we sold 80,000 of those. So I, I really feel that people love the Pip-Boy. It, this will be the best one that's ever been made, in my view. It, it's true, just, true. Yeah, yeah the, the kit sells itself, yeah. yeah my, mine's over there. <laughs> yeah, I can see. Mine's, so, so I'm missing the screen because I don't know if you knew. I bought you know, the... Yeah. We could even talk about the re-releases, the special editions that came out recently. Oh, yes. But I bought the special edition, and I'm going through step-by-step step showing how to turn that into I so something that works, works like this. But I didn't get it to show you. So, like, you push this button right here, and that turns on the lights. Whoops, not just there, but also on the ooh, on the clock. It should. Maybe I'm I'm unplugged on the clock. Um, but the... Uh, oh, I am unplugged. Hang on. I'm going to make this right. Um, so... But at the same time, um, we've got yeah the the clock light. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. lit up now. It's just it's just really light because oh, I haven't charged it in this light. Oh, that's right. And then, and then we push the next one down, and the needle starts to bounce. Oh my goodness! And and that's organically bouncing. And then you push the third one. Oh my goodness! And I've got the Geiger <laughs> And and you know how much it would cost somebody to upgrade this if they if they want to make it because I worked with a company here in the U.S. that makes LED lights and stuff. But they also found when I upgraded my uh, Ecto One 
they they sold a speaker that had the chip built into it. So there's what? no there's no extra things connected to it because I don't have a lot of space in there. And I said, well, can you make one that has the uh, Geiger counter sound? And and I want it to be long, and I want it to so it sounds more natural and stuff. And they said, yeah, we can do that if if your viewers if you think your viewers would end up buying it. I bought and some. So, which, which, yeah, they didn't sell, like, contact them. I said, hey, have you sold many of those? Like, they didn't, they didn't balance out because they felt bad because they made this thing, and, and they didn't get that many sales on it. But at the same time, the total cost to make link, that link down below. was about, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> it was, like, $15 for me to, yeah. to make those little t- t- those little tweaky things and stuff. So I, I was kind of happy about are you, that. It doesn't, are you thinking that, you know, that yeah. we should have done that? I mean, we wanted to make... We started off thinking, let's make a real Geiger counter, uh, a radiation counter. And then we worked. Right. There was, if you did, it would go one click every couple of hours and it would be very boring. Um, apparently, bananas are radioactive. I don't know if you knew that. But um, the other thing that's ra- radioactive are the the gauze. The lanterns. Lantern. <laughs> the things, yeah. So Rich said, perhaps we could fly all over America with those. You no, know, I. I just saw, oh, and then there was this thing, hey, what if we sold some radioactive material with it? Then that would be, no, no, that doesn't really work. All our fans, they, there's a few that are well-known, like uh, Miss Fallout and and uh, um, Tunnel Snakes and stuff. They um, they like collecting, they like going to the to the stores where, you, you know, I don't know what they call them in England, but uh, the, the... Uranium... Where, uh... Pottery, uh... Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So they go to these stores that you know are reselling the old, you know, stuff, and those 1950s plates and things yeah. are more radioactive than than anything else really? that you can put up to oh, these wait. Geiger counters. So they they show like they put uranium next to the, one of the Geiger counters, and it gets clicks. Then they put it up to one of these plates, and it just goes. It's it's the red light is flashing and everything. It's like yeah. just off the scale. Uh, and people have you know dark. hundreds of these in their homes. Uh, yeah. You know, and we're just exposed for years to this radiation coming from their from their you know plates and stuff like that. But yeah, isn't that wild? How horrible is that? Well, <laughs> so I, if you I go think... to an old store that sells old things, you might find a bunch of radiation. For, <laughs> for yeah, for years when um when my when my daughter was young and she wanted a mobile phone, I said you can't you can't have one till you're twelve. In those days, um, and they're the those big Nokia, type, not like brick type phones. And I would say, yeah, the, the rate you're going to be having that next to your ear, it's really bad and your brain's young and your, your skull's so... Um, now we really don't think about it, but all, yeah, all the radiation that's going all through us. My dad said to me once, he, he's, he's fascinated by this sort of thing. I'll just give you a little fact of the day, but I go off, off topic, but he told me that the air in a hot air balloon weighs eight or nine tons. And those oh, yeah. facts when I was a kid really kind of like, and it was the other idea that the television waves and the radio waves and the aerial, uh, the, all the different microwaves, the, all the things, that, not microwaves, the long waves and things, they're all going through us the whole time. We're just sitting here. We're just being basically pummeled by all these things, which are just going straight through. And so, well, you fly on a plane. That's also the highest radiation. You t- so it's people that take Geiger counters on the plane with them just to see how bad it is. It's really bad. Yeah. Especially when you're sitting next to an old grandma with their so plates. So a pilot, yeah, a pilot is probably, uh, yeah, is probably getting high doses I've, every day. I've, I've, I've <laughs> it's the, here, it's, it, the one transatlantic flight is the same as an X-ray. The same as X-ray. Oh, wow. But also in the UK, you got radon gas, like, coming yeah. out of the, the ground. That's true here, too, yeah. And in the US. Yeah. And in the yeah. US. I've got a friend, one of our colleagues, who just bought a house, and then their well had radon in it. They had to have the whole thing pumped out especially yeah. the things but it can it i think that's yeah, dangerous stuff the atmosphere all the uses your pit boy can have yeah yes yeah well sp- <laughs> speaking of uh meters and things like that uh jumping topics i don't know how much you you want to talk about it but i'm i'm naturally interested i mean i showed you i showed you this next week i'm taking this by the way uh that that my tricorder as well as uh i never got that i tried to get a one company the um you know the phaser, phaser. phaser. can I, I couldn't yeah there's not really many uh, the ones that are out there are like five thousand dollars <laughs> but i uh so i'm taking it i'm taking a toy one with me but i'm going out to where they filmed all those shows and filming i'm filming something short for with the hopes of eventually that that tricorder coming out enterprise
Uh, is it still coming out? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, if I had a spare phaser, I'd give. I've got one in my glass, my cabinet at home, and that's it. We every scrap we broke them all. Oh, yeah. so, so we may or may not make another one. I'd like to make another one. They're very expensive. In fact, the year we made that pressed our margins as a company so much that the accountants were worried that we were doing something funny with the company. We had to tell them no. It's just we got. A, we just got no margin on it. But everyone loved that. It's just difficult to make it. Because it was made five or six years ago, or maybe more eight years ago, all the components we used are probably end aligned, or some of the most important oh, ones. Yeah. Uh, also, it was a remote control. That was the license. And the fact is that um, many things aren't, are, aren't IR remote control anymore, so that doesn't make much sense. So, And only with the phasers, when we started doing it, I, we did the communicator, which was going to be the, the wand, which was going to be real, was real like magic wand. Then you got the communicator which we were going to do at the time, which was a communicator. And when we got to the phaser, I wanted to basically have a green laser coming out of the front of it. So we'd start to design it with a green laser. I bought one off the internet that was, um, was billed as one milliwatt, which is legal in the UK. And it was awesome because you could fire the laser and in daylight you could see the green beam. And so it looked like a, it looked like a phaser. Anyway... Uh, we t- took it away and said, I'm sure that's not one milliwatt because you wouldn't be able to see it. Anyway, he took it to a lab and he measured <laughs> it was about 100 milliwatts. You should wear goggles because if it reflects... I mean, I think when I was doing the, the laser, I took it into work and everyone in the room went, turn it off! Because there's all a load of metal in the room. No one wanted it bounce their eyes. Just don't do this at home, it kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely not. So that's the phrase. For the, yeah. for the pit boy, for... For the whole, you know, any discussion we're doing about the Pip-Boy today, it's yeah. our intention is to make it the most gorgeous Pip-Boy. I think it looks similar to the yeah. Fallout 4 one. It's a bit it's a bit simpler than that, but it looks similar to Fallout 4. It is our well, I wanted to do the distressing on it so that it really feels like um, it's a proper model, proper really thing to own. And um, I think fans will love it. And, and I hope the fans of the of the show will like it. But I hope fans of the game will also like it because I feel that it's, you know, it's something that everyone has really wanted. And the working screen will be the fact you can use it as a, as a clock and potentially a watch if, yeah. if you want to. If you really want to. Yeah, you said timepiece in the description, so yeah, yeah I like that timepiece. Sure it's, it's day, day, month, month. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to Richard about that. On that, we want to we want to do some we want to do some upgrades for the watch. We had some really nice upgrades for the watch. And we want to persuade Bethesda to let us do them. Um, That's also, included... the, I mean, there were some people expecting it to work with the game itself, and I'm glad you didn't advertise it as such. Because that, uh, that's well, a bit well, of... we, asked, we asked to do that at the beginning um, because it yeah. would have been really cool. And I know that uh, the guy, one of the guys who worked with him, Bethesda, was one of our, one of our fans uh, high up in Bethesda, really lobbied hard for that. But it, in the end, I think if it had been that happened it would have been very very difficult to make yeah um, yeah well, look, at, look at the the old yeah the old fallout, fallout app that we would use for uh, for the blueberry uh, blackberry but yeah, yeah. but like uh, so chris talked about that a little bit in the last interview is bethesda actually regretted making that app uh and the phone thing right yeah. i think i think it's uh, it, for the fallout 4 one the apps are so hard to do they're so complicated. When we first started the watch, we went to a couple of app companies in the US and in Eastern Europe to, ask, to sort of get some idea about if we could get someone else to do the app for us. And we got quotes of between 175K and one company said it would be between 175K and $1 million to do it. And first of all, that's a wide range. And secondly, Richard came back from that meeting and said, how hard could it be? <laughs> I think he regretted that yeah. afterwards because it is hard. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a million yeah. dollars hard, I don't know, but it's it's a very tricky thing. There are so I, many. I used to make apps for for the iPad, and just you know, as a developer for that, where it, it all of a sudden you got Retina, you've got a new version, you've got something else, you've got yeah. something that has to be, uh, uh, as you said before, like legacy stuff that has to be supported or just has to be disabled. Uh, uh, you have to keep track of it, and and something will eventually break, and you have to fix it. But you have to fix it for each iteration of that OS, for example. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. It's well, and you fix it, and yeah. fixing it for one means you suddenly find that others don't, other versions don't work anymore. Yeah. So when when one needs yeah. permissions and the other one doesn't need permissions, you have to have various. It's and and 
well, one of the most uh, eye-opening things for me was we had um, some software which could monitor the Bluetooth traffic between the the watch and the um, and the phone, and we turn it on, and then this huge stream of text goes past it's so fast you can't see it, and it constantly goes past. And I said to Richard, "Cool, that's really a lot of information." He said, "Yeah, if you look to the top." We're selecting only three out of the millions of things that it can show us. It's only showing us a tiny port. So we had actually selected a few things we wanted to look at. So when trying to error check something like that, when it's going, you know, you have to, then he said you can do a, a dump, a whole dump of a few, um, a few seconds of that, which you can then pour through each line. But it's, it's a very, very tricky business. And I don't know why it's so complicated. I think also the Fallout community has also risen to actually having this stuff available. Like, look at me. I've got a um, the big mug from Fallout. Yeah. Uh, all that stuff being more available allows people also to, to cosplay more. And those in-universe items that you, your company is making uh, will also increase in popularity because of that. Because people like to dress up and play now in real life as Fallout characters, as Jeremy has done. <laughs> yeah, example. well, I was going to say, so I don't know if you're aware of this, Chris, but so two years ago... Um, the fall. I mean, it's related to Fallout New Vegas, but it's not limited to Fallout New Vegas. Uh, two years ago, I got an invitation to go out to Good Springs, which is a real place, uh, you know, that actually exists and looks like it does in the game. I mean, it looks exactly like it does in the game. This is a place that looks like something out of Mad Max or something, and has the the saloon is actually there. It's operating. I mean, everything is very real. So they decided to have like a gathering of Fallout fans. And I think that year was what three hundred fifty people that showed up. First one, yeah. Then this last year, I so I decided, you know what? I'm going to prepare for it. I'm going to make. I made some. I made a uh, working. I made a working gun and stuff that actually squirts uh, stuff. I was trying to make my hip boy that was also uh, Nuka Cola yep. branded and everything. And uh, and I got there, and we were expecting about the same number of people because I brought stuff with me to hand out. There was three thousand five hundred people that showed up to that event. Wow. I mean, I mean, just filled up this whole area. They had, you know, and they had a small market of things. The number of, of your pit boys that I saw was it was crazy. I mean, there's, they were everywhere, market, and I, uh... <laughs> I I would tell them to, and they, you know, and they all put their. There was one that tried that turned his into kind of a, um, a steampunk version well, of stuff, well, and you know, the, I saw them all there, and I'm like, hey, you know, so we got to see all these different versions of that, and. And, you know, things that were, people were carrying. One guy had, he had a s- suited up so that, um, you know, like in the game, you try and collect things as you go along. Yeah. And so he had all these bags and everything else to strapped him and had every Fallout prop you could imagine. And he had everything you've ever made as far as Fallout goes inside of all these little bags and things all over him. He had the puppet on his hand and stuff. It was, it was incredible. But, I mean, like, there were so many people that were there, and they're estimating that next year will be twice as many as that. Wow. Um, this year, Or mean. this upcoming year. This year. Yeah. Sorry. I'm still... See, I'm still editing that video from last year. Uh, and, and so, uh, because, like, I think this is my second time going out to Nevada. That's what that's what yeah. we said to um, to Todd Howard where, where, when we were at that uh, event. And uh, also the, the producer, I mean, uh, Jonathan Nolan, uh, the director and stuff, the fact is that it's such a rich environment. There's so much you can draw down on. And I think that was the hope for fans, that the, the show would come out, uh, the TV show, and it would it would live up to the expectation. Because I think when fans get the angriest is when things are done by somebody who doesn't care or someone who doesn't really understand the franchise. And I think that um, all that we've tried to do at The One Company is be respectful to the fan and respectful to the franchise because it's lovely you don't want to take any risks with it. You want to do the really the most beautiful thing. Um, so I, I think that the show, you were saying, will the show be successful? All the signs are that for people who even aren't Fallout fans are going to love it. I mean, I, I sent the latest trailer around to my family when I told them that I'd done this thing the other night. I was telling my, bro- my brothers this is what I'd done, which is pretty cool. And they all said, oh, my God, that's incredible. I'm going to watch that. Now, these are people who wouldn't play Fallout, uh, but they they... The show looks like it's going to be good, and it looks well done, and it looks like it's got a good story, and I and I think that's really important. Um, and it's it's a real, <clears throat> I think there's a real uh, hope that they'll it'll be successful, and that as a result of being successful and being good, another one will come out. I mean, look at Reacher. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen that, but oh yeah, 
Um, yeah. I don't think the second series was as good as the first, but then there's been a lot of chat about that and maybe they'll go back to the the sort of like uh, guy fish out of water kind of concept for the, that they did for the first one because I think that's much works much better. But to me, um, that sort of show really, really hits home. It's really good. It's a, a great watch. It's not too long. There's not too many episodes. And I think the Fallout one could be the same. I think it could be really quite and imaginative. Plus, I have to say, I love Matt Berry as Mr. Handy. It's it's difficult. I should imagine it's a thing for to try and capture as many people as possible. So yeah, yeah, we'll see. But I mean, I I uh, the first trailer when I came out, I showed my wife and she said, right, we'll definitely be watching. She's not a gamer, and uh, you know, so I I hope it'll it'll be a, a roaring success. I wasn't a great fan of Citadel of Amazon spent so much money on it. So, and I'm not a massive fan of Foundation. Um, I to be fair, I haven't watched much of it, but um, so big budgets don't necessarily mean good product. But I think that the, the Fallout one does look good. So, I mean, I'm hoping things. Yeah, yeah. because of the- I I gotta say, I mean, they're trying to stay true to the to the franchise, which yeah, and, is and it's quirky. which is I mean, important, it- regardless. So. You should yeah. you should never take Fallout too seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, I have respect for the stuff, but of of course, I mean Fallout itself is just a f- fun and quirky game to play and experience. You you are you. I mean, it's tricky because you're working on and what you're what you deal with. We talked about Pokeballs, so you got all the Pokemon fans. Yeah, you've got. We talked about Fallout. You got the Fallout fans. You you know Star Trek fans are. It can be the worst, even. They're like next to Star Wars in the level of like pickiness. No, no, Star Trek but, ones are you worse. Know, <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> same time. Well, of course, we're a Star Trek and Star Wars fans. Same but <laughs> That tricorder is going to be finished this year and being in production this year. And it's getting to uh, every time we got close to FEP, which you'll know is functional engineering mm-hmm. type of production, rather. Mm-hmm. We had another EP rain round when oh, they, was, they found a mistake on a PCB or they found something wasn't working properly or yeah. turned it on for the first time properly with all the systems working and there's a great big hum on it. They've got to sort that out. Right. So, I mean, there were things like that. Well, shortages too, right? I mean, that's a hard thing yeah. in the in the world right now is yeah, there was a- where do you get some things? Yeah. But um, what other ones, the- I, I guess where that was going is what else would we do? The, one of the hardest things for us has been working out what to do next, what what products to do. Yeah. Um, but I've got other... Th- oh, Doctor Who. I left out Doctor Who. You did Doctor uh, Who, too. Well, we did that, that, that was very successful, but it's kind of... Yeah. It, it it went up to Zenith and it kind of dropped off by the, uh, after that. So, um, but I mean, yeah, we enjoyed our time with Doctor Who. But uh, yeah, I'm always thinking, what is the next thing? But we have a habit of doing stuff and then something just comes out of the woodwork and, uh, you know, it is suddenly... We've had... It's funny, because we're a small company, we went through a sort of um, cycle of, it's quite a uh, stop and start. So we'll develop something for two years, we, we'll, our money will go down, and then we'll sell it, and it'll do really well, and then we'll go down again. But we've had these really lucky um, sort of sales bursts every few years. Like, we had one where it was games, one where it was Best Buy. Uh, obviously, the poker mm-hmm. stuff has been really good for us, and now we've got this Amazon. Yeah. Think Geek used to be Think one of your Geek, big yeah, ones. Yeah, and but yeah. you've got to constantly look. R I P. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. sad. Yeah, very sad. And go, but we keep looking for new things and new markets and new products, and we just find things that we know engage fans that we can put a lot of effort into them. Can people still go on as far as uh, for, for both the uh, forum and getting? Uh, I, it's not really pre-order for that. It's more just as you're saying... Vertibird. So the, send me information. Yeah, kind so of the Vertibird is going to be yeah. pre-order. Right? It's going to be... Oh, yeah. It's yeah, okay. going to be uh, give us your interest. And I, when that when that tips over a certain number of interested people, we will then do pre-orders for it, and then people can sign up. And that like, the next few months, we'll, we'll decide to press the button and go forward. The minute we decide to go forward, we'll start pre-orders. For the, for the Pip Boy, I noticed there were some comments... Um, I don't know if it's the, the comments on your thing or somewhere else where someone was saying, oh, if, if I don't go quickly, there'll be scalpers and stuff. We will try and make as many as there are people that want them. Oh, okay. That's good to know. So it's, Yeah, that was on, on ours. I mean, uh, truth be told, if you, saw, if you saw that video, I mean, already, if you go on eBay, people are yeah. already selling yeah. it. They don't even have it. And it's months before it comes out. Can I just say that? <laughs> I, can, I can buy a house with this one. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. That is clearly nuts. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah. Thing I would tell anyone who's watching this video, go and buy it. Go and sign up for buying it from the from the place. We'll we'll make loads. Do not go to eBay. You won't get any quicker. That's ridiculous. You're going to get the quickest your credit is by pre-ordering it, and we'll get it. And it's only on Bethesda Gear Store. Uh, later, there will be other places to pre-order it from. It, it's not the only place. Also, later, I will do a web page for it so that you'll be able to go and see more information about it. My biggest problem was that South by Southwest was intended to be, oh, put it in the glass cabinet, a few people take pictures of it. And it was like, oh, we'll quickly make a model and it'll be fine. And all of a sudden, it's been elevated to, oh, it's the product. We want it. We want to put it on sale. And it was like literally within weeks. So what I would have loved to have done, and you know this is a one company thing, is I would like to not really show anything until I actually had it ready. Mm. Yeah, uh, we done like we, the we, like, like the tested video uh, <laughs> where, 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 where st modules oh. were shown that that weren't sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, well, they were never made, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they done tested. They showed the. Um, I actually, counter. I worked with Tessa, by the way, also on that third video. It has, as you again, it's all about your company. It's almost like a documentary about your company. I had Dan Lanigan in that talking about your about the Pip Boy that you made. Dan Lanigan's the guy that he's the big prop uh, collector and builder that the Disney even had a TV show he, that he did and stuff. Uh, so he's on there talking about because he got your Pip Boy the week before and was putting it together when I contacted him. So he's like, "Oh, this is perfect timing." I, I had uh, the the art designer. Uh, from 76 who who you you quoted so in your interview you mentioned well you know they, they you went up to him and said hey that's my that's my stand and stuff and in his response in the video is yeah you know i i just saw the in there and it was like well, i guess this is what it goes on like i didn't know it wasn't ours and then i've got uh and then the tested uh norm norm chan yeah. actually edited video for the, the video that they did with you and sent it to me so that we could use it inside the video but, um, but I mean, the great, like I said, the great thing about that video is it goes through and shows that a, on one hand, you guys sacrificed to make sure that the, so the, the fans would have that screen and stuff, for example, you know, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was going to be financially beneficial no. stuff, but in the end you're like, this is what we need. Yeah. And same thing with the stand, the stand had died at one point in time, you, you know, you brought that back and things. But, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't a way to reasonably do some things, you know, like that Geiger counter stuff right. and, and turn it out and also make a, you know, make something for, you know, where, where it makes us to make it and things. Um, it was, it was, it's often you just don't have it, often you just don't have enough time. There's not enough, uh, you know, if I was a, a wealthy philanthropist and I would make these things and it would be incredible. Right. So I, what, what you're saying though, what makes me think is that when I have the first shots of the Pit Boy, the first shot, when I have a thing that's actually the real thing, then I should do a little trip out to the States, come and maybe see you. Maybe maybe we could yeah. go and see um, Tested, and we could do a oh, yeah. thing. And basically yeah. do a bit of a round and show people it actually the actual thing before it's even made in you know it's just the first shots come out i think that'd be that'd be great well and uh people have a lot of questions as you could probably yeah. see from the comments i mean i did get a lot of comments on that video yeah. and and the biggest <laughs> comments you know they're asking pretty much the same questions that the once when there's a, there's a an action you know you have the the working model ready as stuff would answer all those questions well what so, what come on, so, yeah. it's, most common questions yeah, let's run let's run through it. yeah some of the most common questions i had uh were about the now, now, part of this, too, is because of the Pip-Boy 3000s that came out back in the day. So, you know, they're, they're yeah. drawing some similarities. That one, it didn't have a light inside the uh, radio module and the radio, or not the radio module, the Geiger counter of the radio, but it did have a light on the top and on the bottom. Um, and so they were asking, well, it can't, because it's not lit up in the picture. Now that we know, it, it, it's, this is just a picture. But at the same time, like they, they're like, I don't think that those those are going to be operating. And then, and then okay. the, uh, and then the other thing. Okay. Well, I was gonna yeah, say. yeah. So the, this is a lie. It. <laughs> the, yeah, that. Oh, it's not a lie. Oh, what it's is button, that? Button. It, it was just a button. Oh, it's a button. Hang on, it was. It's wrong. Oh. It, it's wrong. It's going to be silver in the real thing. So this is this is wrong. In the, okay. It's, in the pictures that I've, in the pictures that I've done, I have. Uh, desaturated that and made it look like it's silver the same with the bottom one that's going to be uh -huh. that's a mistake 
it, the the real pictures, the pictures that you've got have the latest version of the model, which doesn't have the grill here. This was put in by mistake by the factory and not against our... But they against... never gave you an actual prop from the movie or from, from the series then to, to, to work with. Only the CAD files. The CAD files, yes. So the CAD files... So, so they were, they... The CAD files are so... I don't yeah. know if we'd want the one from the movie. <laughs> The, Sometimes what you see on the screen is different oh, yeah. than what they yeah. actually had, the prop-wise. What I tell you, what's lovely, what fans are going to love about this, is this this front piece here because this metal is cold. So yeah, it, it will yeah, that will, sensation will be very very nice. Um, the it will have audio in it. That's some uh, questions I saw. Your thing, people say, what about audio? It will have audio. The clock that you see on it will look like the one in the show. It'll be the big letters, the stuff like that. So it'll have oh, this. Wow. Oh, okay, I like that. I like that. Big clock. That's good. Um, hopefully, we'll have a night version where it's very dim, so you can just have it plugged in. When it's plugged in, uh, the bit that I showed you earlier, it will um, sit there uh, charging and, and displaying constantly. They'll, I hope there'll be a demonstration mode which will be where you wear it and it just scans through all the screens automatically, you know, three seconds of time going around them all randomly. Yeah. Uh, there, there is something I throw out there for that is, is um, having a mode where you can also have it, where even though the alarm clock is still working and everything else, that, that the screen isn't lit, that where you can make it where it's not lighting up the room when you're trying to sleep. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So there should be a version where it's oh, yeah. very, very dim, like almost, almost off because I, I hate... Eight clocks that are too bright in rooms. When I go and stay in the room, there's a clock. I put it face down, or I, there's a ticking one. I take it off the wall. So uh, <laughs> yeah, there'll be the memory foam inside. This is um, really nice, really nice quality feature. Um, I don't know what else there is I can say about it. Um, obviously, the, the 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 other questions they had were you've already, you've already answered some of the questions. So we now know which portion is metal, what the you know, and stuff like that. That was one of the other questions. You answered another question, which was about how it charges, where that plugs in and stuff. You answered that. Um, as far as, and then you've answered about the lights and stuff like that. I mean, those are majority of the I think there was questions that they had. It, you would, you will turn this to control uh, which yeah, screen you're looking at. Okay, which going across. Yeah, cool. Okay, so as you would expect. How is there other? I mean, is it only that? Like, how are you? How are you? doing all these other settings and stuff oh, like that like are you I having to press something ah. i think can you see this is really weird it's a funny angle this was the design yeah yeah it's an angle yeah this one i think you'll do for That's the where for the uh clock um okay i don't know and we haven't worked it out yet whether there will be a way of controlling the screen that you see and then that scrolling down all the different screens in that because at the moment the idea was that you went from screen to screen and what you saw was a random version because there's about 10 screens on each one or maybe more. So it, we thought it'd be nice that you just randomly saw different screens each time you went there so that you weren't ever sure. Like yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's, and how, how, that's how, cool. How modifiable is the connector for the screen? <laughs> well, <laughs> to put it, your own stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how modifiable it will be. I, there's no reason to do it on this one. That's what makes me yeah, excited about it. <laughs> Yeah, I, and, and that is something that I mean, people. I think also, again, you consider the price of of even and and I mean, it, it, and it was a reasonable price even for those with the Pip Boy special editions and things like that. That versus this is going to have working parts and metal and stuff like that. That's good. Price. I mean, this is this is a good. You know, I think that, I think it is price line. Is, what I what I wanted to do when we go back, <laughs> let's go back to the Sonic screwdriver, the one you flicked out. Sure. Is I wanted to make I wanted to make a product was as good or better than the thousand dollar prop replica that you could buy and i wanted a fan who could spend maybe 60 or 100 dollars to be able to buy something we're, we're not talking the 20 dollar toy we're talking about something at the time a lot of people said you won't sell that there'll be some most only hardcore fans but we had parents writing to us saying that their son had been saving up his pocket money for a year to buy that and he was starting him in, in as a collector so if you take that philosophy, and the, the reason for, that, for that, that, that sonic screwdriver is made in metal, there's a rubber bit part, every part is made, this, it doesn't look like a toy, there's no holes where the screws are going through and all that sort of thing. Right, yeah, you made it where you have to, so yeah. the screws get exposed for taking out the batteries yeah. by taking off this ring. Exactly. So with, yeah. with this pit boy, what I want to do 
is I want to I want to go up a notch and make something that is like the the prop that you would find, which is basically weathered and and has a working screen. Something that somebody else would have said, oh, I'll, I'll either scratch build that myself and it'll take me a year to do it, or I'll pay a thousand three thousand dollars for it. And I want to be able to make that accessible to everybody to have the prop quality uh, replica that they can have and display it on the stand. The stand is gorgeous, so they can just put it there and wear it. So really, that is the quintessential right. replica. And, do- and it should be somewhat heavy. I mean, I, I would think, you know, a, that's, that's I, the other piece. I can't, it. It will I feel can't like pre-order it still, though. <laughs> it's, it's only U.S. for now, though. No, it's Europe. Germany and stuff. Yeah, too. It's, it's on the gear store, US. It, you, you, it's on the. Gear. Somebody said so, in the comments that Germany already sold out. So if are, are they also doing the, just like say, the continue to... People make silly comments, right? Nowhere is selling out. Is that what it is? It can't sell out. Okay. You can go onto the gear, that works. gear store in Europe and you can pre-order it there. It, it'll be numbers to the numbers in the end. Okay. Uh... Well, yeah. Pre-ordering yeah. now? <laughs> oh, there you go. Let's see. <laughs> Out of interest, how much is it in the in Europe? Uh, two hundred eighty-three. Uh, sorry, two hundred and thirty-eight. That's not much more euros. That's about what it is here. It's forty bucks more. Uh, well, you can pay yeah. in the US. You got to pay sales tax, and the the thing with Europe. Uh, yeah, it's okay. it's two twenty was what I paid. I think okay. that's better. Okay. We, so. we have uh, <laughs> in the UK VAT is always included in the price unless you're a tradesman. Yeah. So when you go into a oh, store, right, yeah. price you see yeah. is the price you pay. Whereas in the US, yeah. the price you see, if you tip and VAT and, and all the other things you have, right. it's never the price, right. is it? It's always... It's a, yeah. Yeah, it's a before so tax. It's, it's, yeah. bit, it's a little bit different. So, yeah, I mean, the, um, no, it's, it's a very exciting project to be working on. Um, I have... Um, I have everybody working very hard on it to get all the things. And Amazon love it. I mean, when they took it to show Amazon Studios um, in Culver, Culver City in uh, LA, it was very, very cool, to be fair. Um, their comments were, it is beyond our wildest expectations. So, wow. That's, uh, that's pretty. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. And they, they love the, the VertiBird. Lucy's bag just looks like it came off the set. It's made from the original, made from the original patterns that the fabric patterns that the real one was made of. We've had the materials made specially for it. That one um, on the Bethesda Gear Store is register your interest. But when we eventually launch that on other other retailers, it'll be for pre order. And then the wallet. So I'm wondering when I go in November, I go back to to Good Springs for the next to Fallout event. I'm wondering how many people I'm going to see wearing that bag and the if, and yeah, the pit boy. Hopefully, and... they'll, hopefully they'll be wearing the bag. But I, I have to say that the um, yeah. if if it's not if you're going in November, we we may be able to get you one, so you may be the only person oh, with right. it. Oh wow! Well, yeah, that'd be, that's right because it would be. It's it's November the. Do you know when it is, Vince? I don't I, know. I already put up my ticket. You, you, you two are going. going with me too. Yeah, I don't have the money yeah, for it. James and I are going to go. James is flying. Well, this event's so big. Last year, when I was there, I met somebody from Ireland. I met people from Spain. Right. Uh, you know, they. It was a big. I mean, this was a big thing. I, I mean, it, it, and 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 it's so, it's so surreal because again, this place is. It's not that they decorated this place to look that way. It's just it is just that's the way it this is. this location looks. Wow, it is so bizarre. And then you have all these people that are dressed up. And they're the nicest people too in, in the world. I've never gone to a con where there's so many just so nice and so respectful of each other. And of course, you know, like in Fallout, people bring things to trade. Yeah. And so like people come with, with tons of bottle caps and things like that, and they're giving each other stuff or they're or bottles that, you know, they made to look like in the show and it's just it's Isn't incredible. That, I, it's, I thought it's, it was it's, really cool. Does Bethesda get involved with it at all? You know, uh, so the first, the first year because this was, you know, because it's technically tied to New Vegas in some ways because of those locations, the the developers for New Vegas showed up, which is, you know, wasn't Bethesda. That was wh- who was that, Vince? I'm blanking on it. Yeah, I, the first I, company, the, the the company that started Fallout before Bethesda took it over. That's who did uh, Fallout New Vegas. 
But then this year they did send people. I wasn't there on the day that they had some of their PR team were there and uh, and they were doing stuff. I mean, like, I don't think anyone anticipated the people in Good Springs definitely didn't anticipate, the, uh, you know, over 3000 yeah. people were going to show up, Obsidian, uh, on, uh, and, you know, <laughs> wind up on this land. Yeah, obsidian. It's obsidian. That is that is. So, I mean, it, is. Would, yeah. it would be good. Um, it would be good to yeah. see if uh, Bethesda could be somehow roped ra- into going or doing something with it or having you know. Um, I'll I'll send you information about the event. I mean, it's it's pretty. It was is it's pretty impressive how big that was. But but yeah, just seeing. I like I said, I couldn't believe how many Fit Boy two thousands I saw in different in different levels. Um, I um, now here's the problem. With this one, uh, I'm giving things away in case people, in case I don't get the other video out first. This did not make it on the plane, uh, and neither oh. did the working version of this. Did what? you share the? You can uh, share the X-ray version of it. I bet you love it. Yeah, I have X-ray versions of both of them. <laughs> well, when you put in all the stuff I had in them to make them working, plus you know the outside of this, you got these connectors and stuff going through an X-ray. It doesn't look like something safe to go on the plane. But yeah, they they were like, no, yeah. Nope. Uh, <laughs> I not taking this. In on. the early days, we went to Comic Con and we took uh, sonic screwdrivers with us. And to be safe, we took one in the hand luggage and one in the one or two in the check luggage. And the hand luggage they were, they were handmade more or less, or they were the first ones off the actually they were the first ones off the production line. And we got to the uh, the uh, X ray, and the guys said, um, "You can't take this." So I said, and, and why is that? They said, because it, right. it's a screwdriver and it's over seven inches long. So I said, well, it, <laughs> it's, it's, not it's, a screw, a it's not a screwdriver. So he said, it says screwdriver on the packaging. So I said, uh, well, only you throw the packaging away. You keep that because it says screwdriver on it. And I'll keep this thing, which is obviously not a screwdriver. Anyway, he wouldn't let it. He would not let it through. He had to go in the bin. He said, you can go back oh, wow. and check it into your luggage and miss your flight, or you can throw it away and you can carry on. And so it oh. got left there. That was so annoying. But I've these Pokeball, these are metal. When I, I've got this bag full of all these things and the pit boys in it, they often look at my bag for a long time, and then, they just, and then it just goes through. So I don't know what the deal is. It's not a cluster rum, it's Pokeballs. <laughs> well, Chris, I appreciate all your time you gave us. I, I wish I could have come out in person and, and hung out well, with you. If you right. we're, keep me updated on where you go. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hang out. And I think I'm, I've 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 uh, upgraded what I was gonna say. I think when I get the I'm getting another work oh looks like works like sample. So maybe we'll we'll do a review revisit of this. Or well, maybe I'll come and show you because I think I think if we because the earlier on we explore it with all the fans, the the more we can make, and the more fans will. So you know that's coming soon. Maybe we could do it to tie in with the the show launch because the show launch is cut. Oh yeah, so we could. Well, that's coming up really. Now, am I confused? Because I saw the other day. Is it not coming out? When is it coming out? Is it oh, not coming what? out next month? Oh, it's coming out to binge watch on the first day on the eleventh of April. Right. Yeah, I, I'm I'm wondering what's going to happen with those pre-orders when uh, when that comes out because there's got to be a, a group of people out there that don't know their Fallout fans yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, yeah. They, they told us they've told us actually. Um, Amazon have told us that they're, they're planning on doing X-ray on the show so that if you like the thing, you can pause it and then it'll show where you can buy the things underneath. Oh yeah, That's pretty cool. Wait, wait. Normally, it pops up actors and things and stuff. It'll, you'll be able to. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. I think so. That'd be pretty neat. That's so important. Okay. That, that that is important. That part because it, the people are looking for accuracy, oh. they're looking for something that delivers the um, the feeling of the fa- brings the fancy to life and makes it come real. And you can't do that with yeah. something. There you go. I was wondering when you were going to say your catchphrase. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just... yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you realize actually? You know, before Jeremy, we changed it recently. Do you realize it was? Uh, oh, you did? I didn't know that. Ah, well, it's very subtle, actually. It was, oh. it was um, owning is believing because I really believe that right. own something. But it's now where owning is believing. Oh, oh. very. Good. Like, that is pretty good. I want to I like see that. our company as an emotional destination, and if you, so yeah. where is a place? Whereas owning is believing right. statement, where owning is believing is quite compelling. By it's only a tiny dip. Yeah, I feel it's it's a different. 
That's it, pretty it, it good, gives, though. It, it gives you a home to 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 yeah, let go and and and, and do yeah. it. Yeah, and it's it, it it's That's more smart. about the one more than about the one company. It's about you. It's like you're sitting in your both of you in your rooms where you enjoy. They're sort of surrounded by things that basically are statements to yourself. In terms of people who collect, you know, you might have books or CDs. You might have knitting patterns, or you might have collectibles that you've got. Or you know, if you're very rich, cars or motorbikes. But those things define you as a person. They, but they also ground you. They give you a reason. They give you a, a stepping stone through your life, a sort of memories of things. They, they talk about you, that you feel comfort. You know, when you see them there, they, they kind of fill you with a sense of sort of sort of being. And I think that yeah. um, that's important. So uh, the yeah. only where It's a tangible yeah, connection. Where owning is believing is more important because it's, it's like your, your nook. It's like the place you go. It's like yeah. then. It's, and even if it's even if it's just an emotional one and just a mental one because you're not rich enough to have your own special room, but you have it in your head, and that the place you go where you believe in something is a really powerful thing for people. I think there's so much trouble in the world and so much upset that to have something joyous, to own something and be part of something joyful, is lovely. And that's that's what we try to do. So that's why we add all these actual extra bits to it is to try to get that last bit of value and a sort of real feeling of connection with the people so first off i mean and i mean this thank you so much for for you know spending your time with us and and to be able to to answer so many questions too that have uh, like i said within the last 24 hours well thank you very much so jeremy it's always a pleasure speaking with you and i uh, absolutely love telling everyone and and yourself actually uh it's so easy to talk to and telling you all about our products and, and what goes into them, I think it's just lovely to be able to chat about them. So thank you very much for having me on this show. Our plan is that we're going to stay in contact with Chris and with the one company and, and to be able to, to continue to give updates on their current project as well as other projects as they come along. And, and uh, I mean, honestly, we are obviously fans and uh, and hope to, to continue to be able to, to see this. It's an exciting journey that you guys have gone through. And, and if you haven't seen the third Pip Boy video that really does detail a lot of their a lot of that journey. Uh, I, I check it out. Also check out t- the two uh, up, up to three hours. This this video also uh, you'll have six hours worth of of interview with Chris, uh, which is always interesting. Uh, you know, if you want to hear about his 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 uh, travels to the Dragon's Den to going into a real lion's den, uh, you know, check those those interviews out. And, uh, and also be sure to like and subscribe. Click that reminder bell so you know when this, these upcoming videos come out. In the meantime, this has been your Geek Fix.